How do you design one of the most advanced DRs in the country? At Parkview, we did it by focusing all our attention on you, the patient, by involving doctors and nurses in the design process, by creating quieter, more private spaces, and by leading the region in heart, stroke, and trauma care. This is not your typical emergency room, it's Parkview. In an emergency, isn't this where you'd rather be? Parkview, your partner in health. Quarterback's back to pass. He's going deep across the middle and is picked off at the three yard line. He rolls to his left. He's tucking the ball. He's at the 10. Oh. He is hammered. Oh my goodness. Freight train coming. Throw right down the middle. He's got it at the 10. Oh, at the five. Touchdown. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to SAC Football. It's Friday night. The lights are on and the mics are live. Sit down, strap in, and hold on because here we go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to SAC Football here on Redeemer Radio, broadcasting live from Zollner Stadium tonight. It is the Snyder Panthers taking on the Bishop Dwinger Saints. Before we begin the broadcast, let's send it down to the sidelines for an opening prayer. Well, welcome over to the Bishop Dwinger sidelines, everybody. I'm uh, pleased to be joined with Father Bob Garrell here tonight. Father, please open us with prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask for your continued grace. Look upon all of the student athletes here at Bishop Dwinger, but also at Snyder as well, and all the listeners on Redeemer Radio. Fill them with your blessing. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting live from Zollner Stadium. This is SAC football at its finest. Good evening, everybody. Sean McBride here, joined by Joe Wharton in the box up here. This is Bishop Dwinger football taking on the undefeated Snyder Panthers, and a slobber knocker is on its way. Joe Wharton. Guys, here we go. This is going to be a dandy. All Snyder brings into this game, guys, is the number one uh, offense in the SAC, the number one defense in the SAC. Over the last two weeks, the Snyder Panthers have just pummeled their opponents Wayne and Northrop by a combined score of 108 to 28 so they're really rolling right now the Saints on the other hand they've been dinged up it's been a mash unit it seems like all year good news for the Saints tonight is Peter Winkle John is dressed and on the field Amon Clark is dressed and on the field but they'll be missing a couple playmakers tonight tonight at quarterback for the Saints is number 12 Eddie Morris Eddie Morris will get the start he is a junior 6-1 182 and what an assignment for Eddie Morris, guys, to start his first game against the number one ranked team in 5A. That's these Snyder Panthers. So uh, Eddie Morris is going to have his work cut out for him. Let's see if this offense can rally around him and move the ball tonight. We're going to check in down on the sidelines with our sideline reporter tonight, Mark Watts, with field conditions and coin toss. Mark, what do you have for us? Thank you, Sean. It's uh, good, good dry conditions here. It's a little windy going from the scoreboard away. Dwanger has won the toss and they elected to receive. So Snyder will probably be taking the win, uh, but the field is a little shaggy, so uh, it might help the Saints. 
because it's not a fast track right now. Back to you guys. All right, Mark Watts, thanks very much for being with us tonight throughout the game down on the sidelines, giving us insights that we just don't have up here in the press box. And again, it is the Bishop Winger Saints getting ready to receive the ball from the uh, Snyder Panthers. Joe, when we talk about that, uh, that Snyder team, the 5A defending state champs, Really, you talk about the front four on defense to start that conversation, don't you? Well, these guys have been just absolutely been getting it done, Sean, and we're yeah. going to see them right off the bat. You've got Stroud, Lawrence Johnson, Zach McDowell. Those two guys we're going to hear a lot about tonight, Johnson and McDowell. And that the other defensive end is number eight, Will Johnson. That You're right. That's where it starts up front for the Snyder defense. All right, folks. Kickoff is nearly here. We have dry conditions, about 72 degrees out here, clouding up here at Zollner Stadium. And um, let's see if we have uh, some action down on the field here as we got a, a live microphone in the scrum. All right, men, your officiating crew tonight is Mr. Meeks, your umpire. Hey, good luck tonight. Keep the sticks on the ice, guys. Your line judge is Mr. Long. Your back judge is, is Mr. Hoyt. And your headlinesman is Mr. Branch. All right, gentlemen, we already did the coin flip. Bishop Dwingers won the toss. They elected to receive. You guys are lined up where you are, okay? Bishop Dwinger won the toss. They will receive. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Good luck. Okay, we are ready. It's fiery down here, guys. Uh, we're going to have a good one. Here we go. Joe Warden, let's talk about the starting lineup. Starting lineups for the Bishop Dwinger Saints. Again, getting the start at quarterback tonight is Eddie Morris. Blake Pachelny is not dressed. The running backs are Effinger and Hake. Receivers, Tommy Steele, Bradley Black, and Alec Watercutter. The offensive line led by number 65, Joe Titman, Bill Magda, Frank Yanko, Sam Henry, and Marcos Olivas. And listen, Sean, seven guys going, seven starters going both ways for the Saints. Right. We're going to keep an eye on fatigue later in this game. Real quick, the starting defense for these 5A number one ranked Snyder Panthers. Up front again is Stroud, Johnson, McDowell, and Johnson. Linebackers, Campbell, France, Cox, and Morgan. Defensive backs getting the start tonight. Hoover, Starks, Slaughter, Mac Hippenhammer. Here we go. Mac Hippenhammer, excuse me, is not starting on defense. <laughs> I, I got a little crazy. He's, little he's crazy. the kick returner. Tonight. Kick returner, that's exactly right. Let's get it on. Here we go. Back deep for the Bishop Dwinger Saints. Our good number 32, Mike Cake, and number three, Mitch Effinger. Snyder preparing to kick this one away from the 40-yard line. From the right hash mark, high end over end kick, driving the receiver back into the end zone and no chance for a return for number 33 that time, Mitch Effinger. So the Bishop Dwinger Saints, led by the junior quarterback, Eddie Morris, will take the field and see what they can do here in the first quarter on their first drive. If you remember last year, Sean, the, this was the SAC title game. Not so much this year. I think Snyder has it all but wrapped up. But last year, the Bishop Dwinger Saints upset the Snyder Panthers 20-17 to and were able to win the SAC victory bell. Here come the Saints as they break huddle. It's going to be a double wing back with two wideouts to the left side. Now a man in motion behind the quarterback through the middle. Here's a pitch out to the right side. It's a halfback pass. Going deep, he's wide open. It is caught by Black at the 50, the 40, the 30. He is running downfield, getting dragged out of bounds on the far sideline inside the Snyder 20-yard line. Sean, we heard about it from Jason Garrett, the offensive coordinator this week. He said that, listen, all plays are in play this week. <laughs> he right. goes, we're starting our third-string quarterback because the number two quarterback also is not dressed. Nick out tonight. So Eddie Morris is the third-string quarterback. Coach Garrett's going to pull out all stops. A halfback pass, a 65-yard connection between Eddie Morris and Brad Black puts the Saints inside the red zone down to the 15-yard line. All right, first and 10 for the Saints. Pro set, two wideouts to the right. Here's a snap. And they go right through the middle on a little trap play. Might not have a whole lot there as the uh, defensive line shows up and drives the runner back. Four or five yards maybe on that, Sean? Let's see what it is as Mitch Effinger took it right through the middle. Yeah, we'll call that a four-yard gain down to the 11-yard line, bringing up a second and six. A little inside trap, Sean. Those big guys are so dominant. McDowell and Johnson, the defensive tackles. But one thing you can do when you have a couple dominators up front, you can quick trap them. 
Here come the Saints taking their time back in the huddle. They come up with under 10 seconds to go on the play clock. Twins left and right, single setback. Now a man in motion. Here's a snap. They fake the jet sweep, trying something through the middle. It's blown up and stopped right away. That was a busted play. Something was wrong. Uh, A back went the wrong way. Something happened there. It did not look good. And um, unfortunately, it was Effinger, I believe, had to eat it. (laughs) Somebody had to. So that's going to be a loss of two on the play, bringing up a third and seven now for the Saints. Ball resting at the 12, well, third of one, loss of one. Third long now for the Saints from the 12-yard line. From the shotgun, Morris with a single setback. Twins right and left. Here's a snap. He looks to throw. Looking left, looking left. Decides to tuck it and run. Not much there. Goes back right. He's got a seam. Gets He's in. The in. Are you zone. kidding me? Touchdown, Eddie Morris. Unbelievable. He didn't look like a third stringer there, Sean. Oh, my heavens. The Bishop Dwinger Saints have struck gold on their first possession. Mark Watts, you were right down there. Well, when I talked to Coach Schwarzkopf tonight, I said, hey, how about this new quarterback? He said he's athletic. And if he doesn't see his first or second receiver, he's going to tuck it and run. He said, and that will never hurt us tonight. It sure didn't hurt him tonight right on that play. Back to you. Ten minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the first quarter, and the Bishop Dwinger Saints have scored their touchdown on the opening drive. C.J. Booth for the PAT. It is up, and it is good. The Bishop Dwinger Saints shocking the Snyder Panthers 7-0 early on in this contest. Stick around, folks. We're back in 30 seconds. You're listening to SAC Football on WRDF for Demer Radio 106.3 FM. Make a difference in your life and others by joining. Every great team has focus and talent. And at Parkview Sports Medicine, our focus is on you. From performance training and nutrition counseling to orthopedic surgery, athletic rehab, and more, Parkview Sports Medicine's got you covered. You can trust us to bring together today's top experts in sports medicine to improve the performance and treatment of athletes like you. Go to parkview.com slash sports medicine to learn how we can help you and the athletes in your life be your best. Parkview Sports Medicine, upgrade your game. Back to live action here at Zollner Stadium where the Bishop Winger Saints on four plays strike an 80-yard score. A beautiful halfback pass that time from Mitch Effinger to Bradley Black set up the score and then the the junior quarterback, Eddie Morris, with a nice 12-yard gash there against the defense. Yeah, and the big thing about Effinger's pass on that halfback pass, Black was so open, nobody within 20 yards of him. Right. Effinger didn't try to do too much and overthrow it. Into the wind. Remember, right. it was into the wind. It got held up a little bit. Black actually had to wait on it, which is okay. Yeah. It's better than overthrowing That's it. That's exactly right. So great poise that time by the Bishop Dwinger offense, and C.J. Booth prepares to kick this one away from the 40. Kicking into the wind now. Kicking north. Booth number 19. Here's the kick. It's on the ground, spinning, taken by an up back near the 35, going across the field, getting pursued. Big t- This time he's pursued, brought down. Stopped at the 30, and here come the gold helmets to swallow him up. Looks like 49, Bart Tittman, the starting defensive end, on the stop for the Saints. Let's talk about the starting offense for the Snyder Panthers. Michael Hoppert is the quarterback, 5'10", 175. Behind him you have Money Woods, receivers tonight are Mack Hippenhammer, Gorman, McGrady, and the tight end is Bryson Half. The big boys up front, Dellinger, Eastman, Reed, Hinton, and Thornton. The defense for the Saints tonight up front, Bart Tittman, Stephen Nix, Frank Yanko, Sam Henry. Linebackers are, looks like, uh, well, he's in there. Yeah, uh, he is. Sledge is in. Winklejohn, Hake, and Bloom. Effinger, Watercutter, Steele, and Brad Black are your defensive backs. Here is a snap on first and quarterback keeper around the right side. He's finding a seam through the middle, gets north of the 30, out to the 37-yard line before he's swallowed up and stopped. Michael Hoppert on the run. Michael Hoppert is not known for running. He's more of a passing quarterback, but he can run, has some ability with his legs. Hoppert has completed 56% of his passes this season. He has six touchdowns and five interceptions. Call that a gain of nine on the quarterback keeper. Oh, it's a bad snap. It's over his head. He's going back to cover it. A flag comes out, and they cover it back on the 20-yard line. We do have a flag on the play, so clearly an early snap that time by the center as the quarterback was not looking for that ball. They go back and cover it near the 20. We have an illegal shift against Snyder, I bet and that will be, be declined. declined. So a 17-yard mistake by Snyder early, and the ball is now resting north of the 20-yard line. 
That's not how you want to start your first offensive series if you're the Snyder Panthers. These Snyder Panthers score a lot of points, 43 points a game to be exact, Sean. They can strike at any point on at any time on this field. Third down now and about 18 for the Snyder Panthers. Quarterback in the shotgun with a single setback is Woods. Here's a snap. He looks to throw. Quick screen to the right side. It is caught. Open field tackle. Not much there. Out to the 25. Mac Hippenhammer on the catch for the Panthers. Tommy Steele in coverage for the Saints. Good idea if you're Hopper. Throw it to Mac Hippenhammer, your D1 recruit. Remember, Hippenhammer took a full right offer to Penn State. Big 10 player right there. Hoping he can make a couple players miss. Tommy Steele, nice, sure uh, open field tackle there. That's going to bring up a fourth and about 14, and the punt team comes on for Snyder. So a three and out to answer the score from Bishop Dwinger. For the Snyder Panthers here, two men back deep. That's Black and Effinger. Here is the punt. It is away. Beautiful punt that time. Spiraling drive to the far side of the wow. field, and Dwinger does not cover as it goes out of bounds near the 30-yard line. It was a great punt. Uh, Snyder's averaging 35 yards a punt. That one was this 43. Season. A 43-yard punt by the Snyder Panthers backs up the Saints at the 28-yard line. So here comes Eddie Morris and company back on offense for the Saints. The score is 7-0 with 8 minutes and 36 seconds remaining. Take a few minutes here to give some special love to our brother-in-arms, Casey O'Boyle, in the hospital with Mrs. O'Boyle, his mom, his entire family there, hopefully getting some joy out of this game and uh, know that our thoughts and prayers are with the entire O'Boyle family at this critical time. No doubt. Here come the Saints on first and 10. Snap, quarterback keeper through the middle, looking for some room. Won't find anything. Oh, we've got a flag, two flags coming out now. And the quarterback is dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Flags flying everywhere, Sean. Yes. This could very well be a face mask or a hold. It was thrown towards the interior. Let's see what the referee has to say here. It is a face mask against Snyder. Five-yard variety. So they uh, placed the ball at the 25-yard line. So it happened in the backfield. It will advance to the 30. And that should bring up a first and about eight now for the Saints. The Saints come in with the number seven offense in the SAC, putting up 28 points per game. They break huddle with a pro set and two wide outs to the left, one wide right. Is that Amon Clark in the backfield? Amon Clark is, uh, or is that Jordan Hudson? I'd be Jordan Hudson. Here's a snap. He's looking to throw, looks to the flats. He's got a minute. Oh, hit the back, uh, hit the defender in the back as he was going for number 82. That is uh, water cutter, and it's a uh, short ball thrown incomplete. Yeah, that was Jordan Hudson in the backfield for the Saints. Eddie Morris coming into this game was one out of four. That's 25%. No touchdowns, no interceptions. So an incomplete pass there. Brings up a second and eight for the Saints from their own 30-yard line. Trips package to the left now. Single setback is Hudson. Here's a snap. They flow. Here's a pitch. Hudson has it. Looking for some room. Gets out to the 30, out to about the 32. Jordan Hudson has been very impressive in practices here in the last couple weeks. They've seen him on uh, scout team as a running back. He's been unstoppable from what Coach Schwarzkopf says. So uh, expect him to get some carries tonight. Jordan Hudson, number 23 for the Saints. And here comes Amon Clark, number 13, checking in as Hudson checks out. Saints facing a uh, third and five now. Ball is at their 32-yard line. Saints up 7-0 with seven minutes and 40 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Twins right, twins left in a single setback. Amon Clark in the slot left. Here is a snap. Looking right, looking right, firing right. He's got his man. It's open and caught. And it is a first down. That is Jaws, Steele on the catch. Tommy Steele on the catch. Nice throw, nice pocket presence by Morris. He got rid of the ball. He stood in the pocket and took a big hit from Johnson. But listen, he stood in there and delivered a strike to Steele. Steele comes into this game, the leading receiver for the Saints. He has 18. That was his 19th catch of the season, guys. Ball resting at the 44-yard line and a first and 10 for the Bishop Winger Saints. go. They come up to the line with a trips package on the short side, the right side, one wide left, and a single setback. From the shotgun, here's a snap. Quarterback, keeper, right side, flowing down the line, looking for some yardage, won't get much. He'll advance the ball past the 45, maybe to the 46. 
Call that a gain of two, bringing up a second and eight for the Saints. Talking to the coaches this week, they felt like it was really a crisp week of practice and that the team was rallying behind one Eddie Morris. And there's a bounce in their step tonight early on the offense, Sean. We can see it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, it surely helps to uh, get the ball first and make a statement like they did. Oh, with a with a halfback pass? You betcha. <laughs> for about <laughs> 60 yards? Yeah. All right, on second and eight, high formation for the Saints. Quarterback under center. Here's a snap. Give to the tailback. Right side, Hudson finds a seam. He's to the right side. Gets to the sticks. Another first down for the Michigander Saints across midfield into Snyder territory. A great lead block there by Isaac Cornwell. I call him Honey Badger because that kid just is tenacious. And you saw it right there. Lead blocking, sealing the backer, and uh, creating a lane for one Jordan Hudson. First and 10. They placed the ball at the 45-yard line of Snyder. Dwinger getting it done here. They started this drive back on their own 28-yard line. Now they're in Snyder territory, down to the 45. Again, quarterback under center, pro set. Go right through the middle, a little blast. Effinger's got some good positive yards. Inside trap again, guys. That's how you can neutralize the big guys up front with that quick hitter uh, inside trap. We'll call that a gain of eight, bringing up a second and two. Down to the 32nd, uh, 37. Saints already back up to the line, pressing the advantage now. Wow. No huddle offense. Quarterback again under center. Here's a snap. Quarterback keeps it right through the middle, and that will be enough for a Saints first down near the 35-yard line. I haven't seen a lot of nerves out of Eddie Morris, uh, uh, no. Sean. No, he uh, does not look scared to be in there, Joe. Early report card. I give him an A early here in the first quarter. And, and how do you keep Snyder from scoring? You keep their offense on the bench. That's exactly right. Mark Watts, real fast, what do you have for us? And Dwanger's doing this Dwanger's doing this against the wind. So the longer they can keep this drive going against the wind, there's only 536 left. It's more to their advantage. Back to you Boy, guys. great point. Trips left this time on first and 10 from the 34. Quarterback in the shotgun. Looks left. Looks left. Fires right. Fade pattern. Right side has a man up. Oh, incomplete that time. Good coverage. He was going for uh, Bradley Black. Alone in the corner, but great defense that time by, I think that was the corner for Snyder trying to get a neat uh, number out there. Was that Starks, number five? I think I think it was Starks. Yeah. Big uh, Lawrence Johnson, number 90, 6'4", 295, put Morris on his back right as he threw that ball. Somebody better get a hat on big number 90. Maybe two. Let's go with two. <laughs> Second and 10 for the Saints now. Pro set. Now we've got a flag on the play. And it looks like we have a Saints penalty here lining up in the neutral zone. I can't believe offensively you line up in the neutral zone. Those are just some of those unforced errors that will make the uh, coach pulls hair out. Yes, indeed. So that moves the ball back uh, from uh, second and 10 to second and 15 now. Ball resting just inside the 40-yard line of Snyder with five minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Saints on top, 7-0. Still back in the huddle. They better get up there quickly. It's a great cuddle yep. with 10 seconds left to go on the play clock. Twins right and left, quarterback on the shotgun. Five, four, three, two. Here's a snap. Okay, he's looking to throw. Screen, left side. He's got a seam. Breaks one tackle. Breaks two tackles. Gets down to about the 35, so he gets the penalty yardage back. Does number 23, Jordan Hudson. Nice little screen pass. Um, the Saints don't screen like Bishop Lewis screens. No, they don't. Um, but nice play. That's one of those things you can do to help neutralize the pass rush is throw a screen. I like to see that because uh, Morris has taken a couple big hits here already. So let's try to slow that rush down with the screen. So we'll call that a gain of four. Brings up a third and 11. Ball resting at the 36-yard line of Snyder. Dwinger moving right to left on your radio dial. Trips package to the right. Morris in the shotgun, looking blitz. down middle. Here comes a blitz. He gets out of pressure. Rolls right. Throws downfield. Going deep. He's got double coverage and out of bounds. Incomplete pass that time. Great presence by Morris. Great presence by Morris. Bad contained by Snyder to let him out of the pocket. But I think it's a good decision by Morris. It really wasn't there. Right. It, so he threw it deep downfield and it ended up out of bounds. And the, and the safety came on a blitz there and came hard and was not picked up by anybody. Right. Okay. Those offensive linemen, I'm sorry, Sean, they've got to keep their head up. We've seen this a trend out of those guys. When teams blitz, we've seen them 
get in there. These linemen got to keep their head up and recognize when the blitz comes. On fourth and 11 now, the Saints punt team comes in. C.J. Booth is going to stand at about the, the 48, launch it from about the 46. Here's a clean snap. Here is the kick. He's angling it to the right side, trying to pin Snyder back deep. It takes a sideways bounce and is touched up near the 14-yard line. That is a 26-yard punt that time by C.J. Booth, but very effective, Joe. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, 12, about the 12-yard line. Yeah, 12, 13, something like that on the far side of the field. So Snyder defense holds, but a lot of time taken off that clock there in the first quarter. Four minutes and 23 seconds remaining. And here comes the Snyder offense. Mark Watts, what do you have? Well, they they kicked it away from Matt Kippenhammer. They don't want him to touch the ball, so he can go 80, 90 yards. So they just kicked it, so he couldn't uh, run it back. Back to you. I think that's a great idea. I'd call that prudent. (laughs) Here's Hobart in the shotgun with a single setback. Here's a give to the uh, tailback, looking for some room, being patient, waiting for his blocks. He'll get a few yards out past the 25, maybe to the 27. And who's there to stop the running back and fill the hole? One other, none other than Sledge Winkle John. He's back on the field. It's good tonight. to see him back on the field. Yeah. No huddle offense for Snyder now. Call that a gain of three, bringing up a second and seven for Snyder. Two wideouts to the left side, wing to the right, and a single setback. Little confusion there by the Dwinger defense as they shuffle players around. Here's a snap. Give to the tailback, looking for some room. Caught from behind. Gets out to the 30-yard line. He won't have enough for a first down. That's going to bring up a third and short for Snyder. Steven Nix on the stop from his defensive end position. Did a good job of backside uh, pressure that time and contain. So a third and three now for the Snyder Panthers. Going to have twins to the right side, pistol formation, single setback, quarterback in the shotgun. Here's a snap. Oh, not a snap. We've got a flag on the play, and I think that's motion. Yeah, false and start. False start against the Snyder Panthers. So instead of a third and short, that's going to bring up a third and eight now for Snyder. And they've got a decision to make here as the ball is now resting on their 15-yard line. Third down conversions on the season for Snyder. They've converted 50% of the time, Sean. Wow. Single setback, double tights. Here's a snap. He's looking to throw. Looks left, looks left, checks off, throws over the middle, up and incomplete that time. A flag comes out on the far side of the field. Nowhere near the play. Nowhere near the play. It was thrown at the line of scrimmage. Does that tell us anything? Ineligible downfield, maybe. Ineligible downfield. You called it, Joe. You called it. I'd say let's uh, bring up the fourth and eight from the 15. Let's decline that penalty. Don't give him another shot down the field. But that's just me. I think that's the right decision, Sean. And I think that's the one they made as the putt team does come on the field for Snyder. Mark Watts, we have a very interesting game going on. Yes, we do. And this is just uh, from my observation, Snyder looks a little out of whack they just don't seem like they've got they're hitting on all cylinders they're looking around i see i see the look on the kids faces and dwanger is playing intensity down or intensified down here back to you all right boozman back to uh punt this one away he's standing nearly at his goal line about a foot off of it Effinger and Hake back deep for the Saints, standing at about their own 45-yard line. Now more confusion for Snyder as a player starts to run on the field. They didn't have enough guys on the field. Play clock now down to three before the snap. They do get the snap off, and it is nearly blocked, but he does get the uh, ball away, and a fair catch called for by the Saints. A 40-yard punt that time by Snyder. Gives the ball back to the Saints at the, their own 45. Early in this game, I give the MVP for Snyder to their punter. He's booted a 42 and a 40-yard uh, punt so far, doing a great job. Boozman on that big kick right there. And here comes Eddie Morrison Company, the junior quarterback. He checks in at 6'1", 182. Under three minutes to go now, 2.56 on the clock. First quarter action from Zollner Stadium where the Mission Winger Saints sit at 7. And the Snyder Panthers sit at 0. Twins to the right side. Split backs and one wide left for the Saints. Morris under center. And now we've got another flag. Another neutral another zone. Another offsides on the offense? 
This is twice he's called it now. And Coach Schwarzkopf's all the way out on the numbers, yelling at the officials. And he is more than animated. Wow. That's too early on in the uh, contest here for it, the Bishop Dwinger Saints. It looks like you're throwing it on the receiver, Sean. Yeah, I agree. But I, I normally the receiver looks at the official and he adjusts he, him. He it looks like the official's it. just throwing the flag. Right. And I think that's what, got, what has Coach Schwarzkopf all upset. Morris under center with split backs. Two wide outs here on first and 15. They go through the middle. He's got a seam. He's got plenty of room. Look at him charge down the field. Gets that penalty back and more. Was that Effinger on the carry? I believe that was number 33. Effinger on the yeah. carry that time for the Saints. Puts him in fine shape. Second and three now. So a 12-yard gainer right up the gut for the Saints. Yeah, the Saints obviously have found something in film today that they like quick hitters right off center's tail. Yeah. Two wide outs to the right. Single setback. One wide left. Quarterback under center. Split backs. Here's a snap, play action, throwing to the right, into the flats. He goes low for it. Does he catch it? Steele has a catch. Yes, he does have the catch, and that will be enough for a first down in Snyder territory down to the 44. You know, one might think that was a, a bad pass by Morris, but I, 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 w I might disagree. It was a low pass where only his receiver could get it. It was past the chains for the first down. Two plays, and you uh, get a first down after a penalty. Right. Nice job by the offense. One minute and 55 seconds. The clock continues to grind down here in the first quarter. The Saints with a fresh set of downs in Snyder territory. Twins to the left. Here's a snap. Get to the tailback through the middle. Finds a little room. Big push by Hudson inside the 40 down to about the 39. I have to tell you, after watching the Bishop Lures tape, Bishop Dwinger tape of last week, I was really down on the offensive line. They were getting no push. Yeah. They were they were not picking up blitzes. They, they were just not getting it done this week so far watching this team run the football right at this the heart of the Snyder defense. Yeah. They're getting a push, Sean. You're absolutely right, Joe. High formation now for the Saints. Twins to the right. Morris under center. Here's a snap. They keep it on the ground. Effinger, oh, we won't get much there. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage and falling forward. I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> the broadcaster skirt. Still a, a little push that time. Down to about the, uh, we'll call it the 37, so we'll call that a gain of one, one and a half. And that's going to bring up a third and four now for the Saints with under a minute to go in the first quarter. The ball sits on the Snyder 37-yard line. Uh, Sean, four down territory. What, do you, uh, what say you? Well, let's see what happens here on third down. I have to think it is, Joe. Split, split backs, two to the left. Here's a snap. And they give it to the first man through. He finds a seam. He's gone. That is uh, Hudson with a big push into the linebacker core. Safety has to bring him down inside the 30, down to the 24. Wow, and that's going to do it for the first quarter, I think, after they roll the clock here, Sean. So the Saints now will have the wind at their back for the second quarter. They start the clock with 20 seconds left, and it looks like uh, Bishop Dwinger is in no hurry to get this play off. And that will do it for the first quarter, ladies and gentlemen. 7-0 to zero is your score. The Bishop Dwinger Saints on top and driving when we come back after this 90-second break. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. Hey, sports fans, listen to who just scored again. John Sullivan with Remax. Buying a home or selling yours? You need the best coach around. Score with John Sullivan at Remax. Score with John. Call Remax and ask for John Sullivan to coach you in buying a home or selling yours. Sports fans, it's time to score with John Sullivan at Remax. Are you looking for an orthopedic specialist? Ortho Northeast has been serving the community for over 50 years with offices in three convenient locations. Look for the location nearest you. Dr. John Pritchard is a board-certified orthopedic surgeon with 20 years of experience with ONE and can assist you with the best treatment plan for your knee or shoulder pain. Dr. John Pritchard is looking forward to meeting you and helping with all orthopedic needs. Call Dr. Pritchard at 260-484-8551 or visit the web at www.orthone.com. 
Hello, sports fans. This is Father Bob Garrow, chaplain at Bishop DeWanger High School. It is time to get geared up for our fall sports season. Whether competing on the soccer field, golf, or cross-country course, volleyball court, or on the gridiron, we wish good luck and great sportsmanship to all our student athletes and their teams. May we become the saints we are called to be. St. Sebastian, pray for us. Back to live action here at Zollner Stadium. The beginning of the second quarter sees the Saints with a first and 10, a little off tackle right. A question of the ball but uh, on the ground, but he was ruled down after a one-yard carry. Brings up a second and nine for the Saints. Saints on top, seven to zero. Hey, first quarter stats real quick here. Uh, this is really shocking, guys. Bishop Dwinger Saints in that first quarter, 157 yards of offense. The Snyder Panthers, two total yards. Two total yards. Thank you, Brad. Bodet. Second and nine now for the Saints. Morris in the shotgun with split backs, two wide offs to the right. Here's a uh, option. Left side, quarterback decides to keep it. Puts a shoulder into it, dragging tacklers for a first down. Near the 10-yard line is Eddie Morris. Sean, I see exactly what Mark observed down there. This defense is just kind of walking around with their hands at their side. At the end of the quarter, they were walking back to the bench, and the coaches were out meeting them with their, raising their hands, saying, get your heads up, get up, we got to yeah. get up. This defense seems really, really flat right now. Yeah, I think you're right. All right, so they place the ball just outside the 10-yard line so that they can get a first down without scoring here, the Saints can. Uh, trips package to the left side with a single setback left. Morris in the shotgun. Here's a snap. He flows to the left. Quarterback decides to keep it off tackle. Left side gets inside the five-yard line before he's brought down. I love what the offensive line's doing. This offensive line is coached by Jason Fabini. They are getting a push. They are sealing these big guys up front off. And the running backs, including the quarterback who's running, Eddie Morris, are finding a little gap and making the most of it and pushing forward. They're pushing the defense backwards. Yes. All right, so second and four now, gain of six. They mark it right at the five-yard line. Again, split backs, twins left. Here's a snap. And Amon Clark goes to the left side, tries to find some room, dragged down near the goal line. He will not have enough, but he may have enough for a first down on the far side of the field. Wow, really, really close. At Right at the marker. There's the first there down signal, Sean. And that's going to be first and goal for the Saints at about the one-yard line. Yep. Here they come. No huddle offense now for the Saints as the ball is set and the offensive line is already ready to go. Morris looks over the defense, single setback. Quarterback decides to push in. Wow. Did it get in? Oh, Touchdown. he's in. There it is. Wow. What say you, Sean? The sanctuary is going nuts. It is a whiteout as the Bishop Winger Saints are shocking the Snyder Panthers with 9.52 to go here in the second quarter. The score, 13-0. to zero. Eddie Morris scores two touchdowns tonight, one 12-yarder, and that one was a one-yarder. This is Eddie Morris who came in who only had passing statistics, <laughs> one out of four, and the only rushing statistic I had on him was he lost two fumbles this year. Okay. <laughs> Wow, what, uh, what, and now we've got a flag on the play on the PAT. We've got uh, offsides, offsides on defense. I think maybe decline it. Yeah, that's the same referee loves these offsides yeah, over he here on the near sideline. Yeah, wants to get his exercise in by throwing that flag. And that'll be a decline penalty. Right, I would decline that. And C.J. Booth lines up. Morris on the hold. Here's a snap, a little low. The kick low and no good. Yeah, no low good snap. that time. Low snap and not really, uh, Morris was not able to get it off the carpet. So 13 to 0 is your score with 9.52 remaining in the second quarter. We're back in 30. You're listening to WRDF for Demon Radio 106.3 FM. You can help support your Catholic parish or school with Notre Dame Federal Credit Union's Elevate program. You'll not only enjoy excellent personal service and save money with your new loan or credit card, you'll also be giving money back to the participating parish or school you care about. Let Notre Dame Federal Credit Union elevate all participating parishes or schools. Elevate can be reached at 844-230-6611 or visit us online at ndelevate.com independent from the university. Second quarter action here at Zollner Stadium where the Bishop Warner Saints lead the uh, Snyder Panthers 13-0. Let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Coach Mark Watts. Well, guys, really, I want to talk about the wind. It is significant out here. It's probably 10, 15 miles an hour, and it's going to help a lot 
and because Snyder really didn't take advantage of it in the first quarter, field position is going to be very important. They've got to get something going offensively, or Dwanger's going to have Dwanger's going to have good field position right again. Yeah, good point. Sean, listen, this Saint, this Panther team has 442 yards of offense per game. So far here with 9.52 to go in the second quarter, they have two yards of offense. Wow. C.J. Boot to kick this one away from the 40. He's got the wind at his back. And as Mark said, it is a significant wind out there. Here is a high end over end kick. Gets some good distance. Hippenhammer has it at the one-yard line. Looks for his lanes, cutting across field, looking to cut back now, looking for something. He finds nothing, and he's going to be dropped near the 12-yard line. Great coverage. You know, and listen, I questioned that when they first kicked it deep to, yep. to Hippenhammer. He is so explosive, you don't want to shift momentum through special teams. But great coverage down there. I believe that was Isaac Cornwell on the stop. So 11-yard return by Mac Hippenhammer, the St. Charles standout for the Snyder Panthers. And now here comes Michael Hoppert and company on offense, needing something here. Again, Mark talked about it, the challenge now, getting something through the air as there is a tremendous headwind for the Snyder Panthers in this quarter. 13-0 is your score. Saints on top with 9.45 remaining in the first half. Snyder lines up. Single setback from the shotgun is Hopper. They flow to the left side. Quarterback decides to keep it. Finds a seam outside the tackle. Gets north. Spins out of two tackles. And finally taken down near the 30-yard line. Again, that's something Snyder uh, is doing that the Saints, I don't think have seen a lot of on film is Hopper running. He yeah. will run, but um, he usually hands off to Woods or Christian Covington, who've been getting it done for about 330 yards a game. Very effective run that time by the quarterback, Michael Hopper. At the 29-yard line, first and 10, man in motion now across the line of scrimmage to the left side. Here is a play action, rolling right, looking to throw Hopper, throws it out into the flats, nothing there. He was looking for half the tight end, doing an up-and-out route, and overthrew him. You want to talk a mismatch, about a mismatch, Hippenhammer came in motion, cut across the field. Who's covering him? But one sledge at Winkle John. <laughs> Winkle John with a bad leg. <laughs> trying to trying to, <laughs> trying to cover Hippenhammer. Trips right now for the Snyder Panthers. Hopper barking out an audible with a single setback. From the shotgun. Tries the hard count. Not much there. Looks over to the sidelines for additional uh, assistance here. Plenty of time left on the clock. And here's the snap. Quick give. Oh, Bumble. the ball is on the ground. Bart, Bart Kippen it has it. At the 10. He's going the in. Five. Touchdown. That's a touchdown. Saint. A Bishop Winger St. defensive touchdown, and they are now scorching the Snyder Panthers. Sean, we just talked about it in tailgate talk this week. This Bishop Winger team, what's been lacking is a defensive score and a special team score. They have zero all year. Bart Tittman gives the Saints their first defensive score, and that's going to help this team maintain momentum here in the second quarter. Just a bad transaction between the quarterback and the tailback flowing to the left side. The ball is on the ground. And who is there but Bart Tippman to skip it up and scamper into the end zone for a Dwanger score. And a stunned silence falls over the crowd here on the Snyder side of the field. Looked like just a bad exchange. I don't know if it was a play fake or who was supposed to get it, but the uh, ball fell right on the ground, guys. And here come the Saints to uh, try the PAT. They're taking uh, quite some time to do this. Special teams mistake here by uh, Bishop uh, Dwanger. They're looking for some personnel. Clock is down to six. Oh, they've got to burn a timeout. Oh, that is not going to make the uh, the Saints happy. A 28-yard run by Bart Tippman, and now they have to burn a timeout to set up the PAT. So that gives us an opportunity. Actually, we're going to go ahead and keep things right here and just remind you that tonight's game is brought to you by Holy Cross College. Holy Cross College is an affordable Catholic college offering a life-changing, life-affirming education and is closer than you think. Just two hours away up north, so search for them on the web at Holy Cross at Notre Dame. Mark Watts, you were down there during that melee of the uh, defensive touchdown. What did you see down there? It was right in front of me, Sean, and the quarterback stuck it in the running back, and the running back did not give him a, give him a good pocket to put the ball in. So... Uh, I'm going to fault the running back that time, and it just went up in the air. I mean, it was and it was right there for everybody to take, and they yeah. saw what happened. Yeah. But Tim, Tim it, 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 it was just a, a bad handoff, really. Uh, no pocket made by the running back. All righty. Well, the timeout is over. 
And the uh, point after team is back on. Again, Eddie uh, Morris on the hold, CJ Booth on the kick. Colin Canary on the snap. Now on the edge, there's Jaws out there. Tommy Steele on the left edge. I wonder if they're gonna try for two here. Morris is the quarterback and he's on the hold. Here's the snap. No, he puts it on and it's blocked again. Blocked so again. no good. Two PATs in a row for Bishop Winger and they are not successful. So 19 to zero is your score with 9.13 to go in the first half. We're gonna see if we can catch up with who might have some scores and updates from around the area. It's what we do. And uh, let's see if Nick yeah. has his ears on and uh, has uh, some early updates from around the area. Well, even though this game is crazy, it's going pretty quick and it's not early guys. We're in the second quarter. And right now Concordia has beaten Carroll seven to three. Uh, Homestead at Wayne. Homestead Wayne tied 7-7. Wow. Um, Belmont's at DeKalb. DeKalb's winning that one 7-0. They had a big pink out there today. Uh, cool pictures on Twitter. Uh, East Noble at New Haven. New Haven's winning that one 13-7. And the other game I'm following right now is Woodlands at uh, South Adams. And they're winning 15-0. So back up to you guys. All right, Nick. Thanks very much for that update. As we get back to live action here at Zollner Stadium where the Bishop Dwinger Saints have a comfortable lead. I don't know if it's ever comfortable, Joe, but 19-0 to so far. Surely a shocking lead. Shocking lead for yeah. sure. Absolutely a shocking lead. I don't kick it deep here, Sean. You don't right. just keep putting the hands, the ball in the hands of hip and hammer. No. I ship kick it. Booth has the wind behind him. Let's see what he does here. No, it's a low liner through to, the middle. It does go back. Hip and hammer's got it near the uh, 10. Gets out to the 15-20. He's got a seam. And he is taken down in the open field near the 27-yard line. I just think you're playing with fire. I agree. <laughs> well, I don't know that Booth wanted that to go as far as it did. That was a 22-yard uh, a return that time by Mac Hippenhammer. And let's see. They do spot it right at the 27-yard line for the uh, Snyder Panthers as they jog in from the sidelines. Bart Tittman gets that scoop six. Bart Tittman getting the start tonight because Luther Hall is out right. with injury. Yes. So Bart Tittman making the most of this opportunity to start. First and 10 for the Snyder Panthers. They are led by number 10, Michael Halbert. They'll be in the shotgun with a single setback, two wideouts on the short side right. Here's a snap, a little low. It's a handoff looking to the left side, finding some room, getting a nice push. Out there is Money Woods past the 30 to the 32-yard line. That's the counter trace, Sean. Two big linemen running right at us here. And uh, Snyder Panthers run that as well as anybody. The other team in the city that runs it really good are the uh, Bishop Bluers Knights. That's right. Follow the uh, towels. That's the, the Snyder right. Patrick. <laughs> All right, so we'll call that a gain of five. Brings up a second and five. Here's a snap. Again, a little counter on the other side this time. As uh, Woods hits the wall, he will have uh, a gain, but not much. This time out to the 35. Sean, this is a team Snyder that rushes for 333 yards per game, 7.3 yards per carry. They're not used to people stopping them for one and two yard gains. They are not. Brings up third, and we'll call that one and a half, maybe two now. Just north of the 35 yard line. Heavy right package now for Snyder. Twins out to the left. Here's a snap. Give to the tailback. Money Woods. Right side. He's got room. He's got the first down. Boy, great pursuit tackle that time by Tommy Steele, saving a huge gainer. If Tommy Steele doesn't make that tackle, I think that goes for six, guys. Yeah, yeah might very well. But it's good enough for a Snyder first down at the 41-yard line. First third down conversion of the night for Snyder comes at the 750 mark in the second quarter. So a fresh set of downs for the Panthers as they line up in the shotgun. Here's a snap. He looks to throw on first down, has some pressure, gets rid of the ball. It's a high floater coming back for it and caught in Dwinger territory. That is Hippenhammer with a great catch near the 39. 20-yard gain. 20-yard gain that time for Snyder at the uh, Dwinger 39. Not sure how Hippenhammer gets that wide open, Sean. Yeah. And it was a high floater. Lots of time for the defense to come over and get it. But Hippenhammer makes a good catch for the Panthers and sets them up on another first and 10. Here's a snap, and it's going to be an option play. They give it to the tailback going out to the left side as Money Woods tries to find some room. He's got a little bit out there inside the 35 down to about the 31. That's what the Snyder Panthers are used to getting every time they hand it to Money Woods or Christian Covington. 
almost seven to eight yards. Yes, that is a gain of eight that time. No huddle offense for Snyder as they feel the momentum shift now. Ball just outside the 30 at the 31. Double tight formation, two wide outs. Here's a snap. He's looking to throw. Rolls right. Rolls right. Has time. Fires. And he's got his man. That is half with a big catch near the 20-yard line. And Effinger delivers a big blow right there, a big hit. Haft is the number two receiver on this team. Comes into this game, the number two receiver on this team has six catches on the year. Yeah. Haft. Haft. That's his a, seven. He is a big target, 6'4", 220, and uh, lines up in that number one position for tight end that time. First and ten at the red zone door. Here's a snap. Give to Money Woods through the middle, and he gets inside the 20, down to about the 16, maybe. Steven Nix again on the stop. Right now, the starting defense, it looks like uh, Sam Henry is not in the game, probably getting a rest. Again, one of those two-way, seven of them, two-way starters tonight. Right. Uh, so you have Fabini, Jacob Fabini in the game for him. So we'll call this a second and long six now for the Snyder Panthers. 19-0 to is your score. Dwinger on top. Snyder driving inside the red zone. Here's a snap. Get to the first man through. This side, he finds a seam inside the 10, down near the five-yard line. Great counter that time by Snyder. Looked like a stop by Jacob Fabini. First and goal at the five-yard line for the Snyder Panthers. The offense now seems to be awake here with six minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Timeout. Coach Schwarzkopf ran down the sidelines to the official and signaled for a timeout. Wants to talk to his defense because on this drive, the Snyder Panthers offense is trying to get momentum back into the white jerseys because they've been marching right down the field on the Saints defense. That they have. So Dwinger Burns, their second timeout of the first half. We'll step out for 30 seconds. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. Shawnee Construction and Engineering is proud to support tonight's game. We specialize in commercial and industrial construction and use unique life cycle principles to provide our clients the highest quality craftsmanship for the life of the project. Shawnee Construction and Engineering are partners with you for lifetime savings. We can be found at ShawneeConstruction.com or at 260-489-1234. That's 260-489-1234. Back to live action here at Zollner Stadium, where the Snyder Panthers are now looking at a first and goal from the five-yard line. They trail the Bishop Dwinger Saints 19-0. But there's a lot of momentum in the white jerseys and uh, black helmets right now, Joe Ward. Absolutely there are. Big Sam Henry, Hoss Henry, is back, has checked back into the game here. Let's see if they go with a five-man front as the Panthers are knocking on the door. They will line up with the quarterback in the uh, shotgun formation. Offset to his right is Money Woods. Wide out left and right. Here is a snap. Quarterback decides to keep it, looking for some room. Tries the middle. There's a huge push that time. He won't have a touchdown, but he does advance the ball maybe three, four yards oh, near the one. He's so close. Michael Hoppert. Now, Michael Hoppert played on a state championship team last year, but it wasn't the Snyder Panthers. It was the Bishop Dwinger Saints, Sean. That's right, yeah. He transferred from the Saints over to Snyder uh, after last year and uh, earned the starting quarterback spot. Second goal from the one-yard line with five minutes and 40 seconds remaining here in the first or second quarter. And it looks like a different formation now as Mac Hippenhammer is going to be under center with a wishbone formation behind him. Little Wildcat here. Double tights. Here's a give to the tailback. Dives over the end zone. Touchdown. That looked like maybe Christian Covington. I think you're right, Joe. There it is. Covington on the touchdown for the Snyder Panthers. 5.23 to go in the second quarter, and Snyder has points on the board. So Mack Hippenhammer comes in as quarterback, wishbone formation behind him, and Christian Covington, after that big offensive line push, dives in for a one-yard score. The PAT is up, and it is no good. good. Wide left, wide left. Wow, that could be a critical, critical uh, turn point right there as Boozman on the PAT was not successful. 
Sean, that was a great drive by the Snyder Panthers. 89 yards, I believe, they covered. Yes. Two big passes, one to Hippenhammer, one to Haft yep. on that drive. But the rest of it was just a full dose of, of we're going to punch in the mouth and march right down the field of running the football and, the and, way Snyder likes to do it. And very successfully done by the Snyder Panthers. 19-6 to is your score with 523 remaining in the first half. We're going to go ahead and keep it right here. Let's check in with Mark Watts on the sidelines. So I, I was on Snyder's sideline. And they've got a uh, television, and they've got an iPad, and you can see exactly what plays, what's going on. So this is really the technology down to the high schools, and you can see guys down there, they're looking at the television, and they've got the plays that they want to talk about, how to defend and how to uh, run offenses. The first time I've ever seen it. So uh, look down there to your right, and you'll see them looking yeah. around that television. There it is, a little really, high def on the yep, sideline. Yeah, really oh. interesting. I thought, uh, I'm like, all right, it's just pretty cool. Back to you guys. All right. Just like when Mark coached. <laughs> yeah. Any comment on that one, Mark? Uh, I think you might have just. Uh... You know, no, no, no. If if I'd have had that, maybe we would have won more games at Elkhart. <laughs> <laughs> all right, 523 remaining in the first half. As Boozman preparing to kick this one away, and are they going to do an onside? No. Boozman puts his leg into it. It's a high cross kick this time. And Dwanger has an up man get it, falling forward to the 31. And that's where the Saints will take over first and 10. Looks like McGeary on the special teams uh, return there. So let's see what the Saints do here if, now that they face a little adversity. That's right. Well, folks, Redeemer Radio is pleased to announce Redeemer Radio Odysseys, offering travel for our community. The year 2017 is geared to be filled with some domestic trips and even an international trip. You can learn more at RedeemerRadio.com slash travel. Here are the Saints on first and 10 from their own 31-yard line. Morris under center, play action, looking, looking, downfield. He's got time, has to eat it. It is going to go down with a sack. That is number eight getting the sack for the Snyder Panthers, and that, of course, is, Sean, Will Johnson. You bet it's Will Johnson. So that's going to be a uh, three, four-yard loss that time for the Bishop Winger Saints. Mark Watts, what do you have? Joe, uh, you know, you said that they were going to have uh, no bullets left in the in the gun. They're going to just go all out. This is when you need to start using some of that tr trick stuff again. Yeah. It, it used one time. Let's keep. Let's be aggressive here if you're Dwanger, I think. Try to get something to happen. Play to win, to... Mark. You don't play not to lose. You play to win. Second and 14 now for the Saints. I formation. Twins out to the right side. He play action. Looks to throw. Goes over the middle. He's got his man. It is, oh, is that incomplete? That is an incomplete pass. As Steele had the ball and is still down on the carpet. He had the ball. Pretty good thrown ball. But a big shot there delivered by a Snyder defensive back left a separated steal from the ball. And another injury for the Bishop Dwinger Saints. This is another critical injury as Tommy Steele is down on the uh, near the 43-yard line. Tommy Steele's one of those two-way starters, guys. Yeah. He came in the leading receiver here with 18. He caught his 19th pass tonight. Also a starting cornerback on the defense. 19-6 to six is your score. 427 left here in the first half. We're going to go ahead and step out for a 30-second break while they attend to a young Mr. Steele. Saints on top of the Snyder Panthers live broadcast from Zollner Stadium. Stick around, folks. We're back in 30 seconds. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. Successful coaches make changes to succeed by calling timeouts to make needed adjustments. For it's clear, no change equals no change. This is David X with Union Savings Bank in Fort Wayne. I started mortgage lending in 1988. Since then, I've been trusted by thousands of area homeowners. I offer low closing costs and great rates on home lending so you can save big money both up front and over the life of your loan. Make a change for the better when purchasing a different home or refinancing to lower your payment. Call timeout, get your mortgage date in hand. Call me anytime for your free mortgage checkup. And make sure you compare. Call David X, 418-6191. Member FDIC, housing lender. Football fans, you can follow Redeemer Radio on social media. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Search for Redeemer Radio and like, follow, and tweet us to join in on the conversation. Well, a report from the field. Uh, it looks like uh, Mr. Steele has made his way off the sidelines. He did take one heck of a shot there. Made his way onto the sidelines, excuse me. And now the Saints are facing a third and 14 off of the incomplete pass. They will line up with trips to the left side, one wide right. 
And here's a draw play through the middle. That's Effinger with the carry. He's got some room. He's got the first down. Still on his feet at midfield. The 45, the 40. He's shaking tacklers, dragging them. Are with you them kidding me? Down to the 30-yard line. Wow. Pinball. That was pinball all the way down the field. He just kept bouncing off of defenders. Like Mark said, the, the, the center defense did not appear ready to come play tonight. They are missing tackles out there. That is not like a Snyder team that we've seen in the past. A 43-yard run right up the middle by Mitch Effinger again. Sets the defense on the heels and Saints with a first and 10 inside Snyder territory at their 30-yard line. They break huddle with two to the right. Split backs and a quarterback in the shotgun. Morris has the ball. Quarterback keeper, here's the pitch. It is a good pitch around the left side. That's Mike Hake on the carry. Looks to be a gain of seven, possibly eight. A dangerous pitch there. Morris was going down and he pitched yes. it. Uh, my heart stopped there for a second, but Hake was able to corral it and uh, deliver a blow to defender and pick up almost eight yards, Sean. That's exactly right. So... Second down, they're going to place the ball at about the 23-24 yard line in between those. And we'll call it a second and long two for the Saints. And they're still back in the huddle right now, talking things over. Start the play clock. And here they come. Trips package to the right side, one wide left and a single setback. Here is a snap. Quarterback decides to keep it around the right side. Flag comes out. He gets into that one. Going back to the left side. Another flag comes out as Moore scampers down inside the 20. But this one is all for naught. This one's coming back. No, no doubt about it. There was a, a blocker on the far side of the field. Had two handfuls of white jersey. So we had an early flag and then a late flag on the play. And the referee is talking to the side judge right now. This might be motion. And it might be holding. So an illegal shift against the Bishop Winger Saints and holding against the Bishop Winger Saints. I think you take the hold. I think you do as well. Back it up 10 yards. 3-12 left to go in the first half. 19-6 is your score. Bishop Winger driving left to right on your radio dial. They have yet to assess the penalty. And let's see what they do here. As they still have not moved the ball yet, the officials from the spot of the foul. That's right, 10 yards from the spot of the hold. Right. About a 13 yard penalty is what it's gonna end up being. And that's gonna bring up a second down and we will call it 16 now for the Saints. They move the ball back to the Snyder 37 yard line in between the 36 and 37. Two right, two left, and a single setback for the Saints. Offset to his right. Morris in the shotgun. Here's a snap. Looking left, looking left, going deep. Left side, man coverage, going up. He got it. He got it. Caught. What a catch that time. Bradley Black, ladies and gentlemen. A 32-yard throw and catch from Morris to Black, and it's first and goal for the Bishop Dwinger Saints. Mark, watch, what a catch. It was right in front of me, but the, it was a great throw. He threw it outside where only the receiver could catch it. Just a great throw and catch, and uh, on the five yard line, things are getting excited down here on the oh sideline. Oh boy. And Bradley Black has had some problems this year catching yes. the ball, Sean. We've yep. seen that, not this time. No. Bradley Black goes up and high points the ball. Trips back, it's to the left side. First and goal now for the Saints. Single setback, quarterback decides to keep it. Off tackle left, and he paid the price. Might even be hit for a loss on that one. I think so, a loss of two. Bradley Black has two catches tonight for 97 yards. Wow. Hello. So that will be a tackle for loss for the Snyder Panther defense as they put the ball back at the eight-yard line. Second and goal now at the eight for the Saints. We wondered how the Saints would answer after the, the Panthers marched right down the field and scored. We're seeing. That's exactly, yeah. To your point, I formation now for the Saints. Wide out, left and right, quarterback under center. Give to the tailback, tries to bounce it outside. Breaks two tackles, stiff arms, gets down to the five. That's Jordan Hudson did a nice job to break the tackle in the backfield and was able to at least pick up some positive yards. Third and goal from the five. A field goal doesn't hurt you either. Remember, you've missed two PATs already. Correct. So a tough three yards there for Hudson. 
But third and goal now from the five. Mark Watts. Yes, but Joe, you've had two blocked. Do you want to have another one blocked? You know, <laughs> there think is about that. There's, think about there's it. nothing automatic in the kicking game no, tonight. No, there is not. Now with that uh, tremendous defense. Third time Snyder. they get it off. Hey, Mark, you're looking at the glass half empty. They did get one up and through. Twins right. Twins left in a single setback. Morris, oh, now we've got a flag. It was an early snap and a red zone penalty against the Saints. Yes, false start against the Saints. Oh, boy. So from third and goal from the five, now it is third and goal from the ten. And in checks, Amon Clark. You could have maybe from third to five, third and goal from the five, maybe a play action at that point. Right. But now I think it's really a uh, passing down. Could very well be. Okay, slot to the right is Amon Clark, two wide left, and a single setback is Effinger. Here's a snap. He's looking right, looking right to the side. Oh, he's got pressure, and he goes down. Big time sack that time by Snyder. Snyder came on the blitz. That's number 22 that came on the blitz. I've got to check my roster, guys. Yeah, he's, he's not, not as listed not a as a starter. starter. Um, Snyder came into the game with eight sacks on the season. They have two here tonight. Tristan Wells on the sack Tristan that Wells. time. Yeah, for the Snyder Panthers and blew it up immediately and drops Morris back at the 15-yard line, a five-yard loss for the Saints. And here comes the field goal team. And it, it doesn't look ready. It does not look ready. They're still running bodies in. And uh, Dwenger is going to have to burn their last time out here with 20 seconds remaining in the first half. As, again, a personnel issue causes them to burn a timeout on special teams, Joe. That's how they burnt their first timeout. Mark Watts, what do you have? Okay, but you don't want Snyder to have any time left. So I know that was a personnel issue, but Schwarzkopf played it great. There's only 20 seconds left now. He got down to four seconds. Snyder's are going to get the ball back maybe with 15 seconds left to go in the half. So it worked to his advantage, I really think so. Back to you guys. All right. So a timeout on the field here with 20 seconds remaining. 19 to 6 is your score. Dwenger trying to chip in three more here. Now let's see, the ball is resting right at the 16 yard line. It would be a 33 yard attempt here for CJ Booth and company. With the wind at his back, a good wind at his back. Guys. Yes, it's a healthy wind. And Mark is positioned right over there behind the goal post. Eric Pete on videography tonight for the Redeemer radio staff. We'll have a great look at it. From the right hash mark, the timeout is over. Eddie Morris on the hold. C.J. Booth steps it off, and now we've got a timeout Snyder. They're going to try and ice the kicker. Gamesmanship, I Gamesmanship. like it. Gamesmanship here at the high school level. you got to love it. And, of course, why wouldn't you, Joe? 20 seconds left in the uh, first half. Really have no need with two timeouts remaining. So let's burn one and make the kicker think about it. Well, if the Saints are able to make this convert on this 33-yard field goal, it's going to make the score 22-6. to six. Yep. That's 16 points, guys. Yeah. 16 points. That's two scores and two two-point conversions the Snyder Panthers would have to have to just pull back to even. I really want to get in touch with uh, Brad Bodette in the first half here and talk about some numbers. I got to say, while we have a moment here, how impressed I am with the junior quarterback from Bishop Winger, Eddie Morris. He's not playing like a third-string quarterback. Uh, no. Not, not at all. He has really gra embraced this moment. And what, what Eddie Morris has here tonight, guys, was an opportunity, and I'm sure that's how it was presented to him. Why, why be afraid of anything? Right. You have an opportunity. Nobody expects anything out of you. Yep. Go have fun. Play yeah. the game. Be a world beater. Let's yeah. see what happens. Yeah. Okay, here come the Saints. The Snyder students section are on their feet, adding their voices. C.J. Booth, just in case you wondered, is two out of four on field goals this season. Oh, we got a different formation Oh, now. offense is on the field. Offense is on the field. A spread formation, five wide outs. Here comes Morris. the blitz. He's going deep to the corner. Nobody, Nobody there. there and incomplete as he was trying to hit Amon Clark. And nobody around for 10 yards. The heat was coming. Morris threw it deep and incomplete. 
I think the Saints were trying to catch him off guard. They hurried right from the timeout huddle straight up to the line of scrimmage and got ready to snap the ball, hoping to catch the defense, and uh, nobody in the area were any more threat. Oh, yeah, great press coverage that time by the Snyder Panthers, not allowing those uh, receivers to get out into their routes, and uh, that stalls. So yeah. 15 seconds remaining here in the first half, and the Snyder Panthers take over at their own 16-yard line. Somebody better keep two guys, three guys better keep an eye on Mac Hippenhammer. That's right. Here's a snap. Play action. No, they give it to the uh, Money Woods, who's got some room around the right side. Gets into the linebacker core. Still on his feet. Dragging tacklers with him near the 30. They're trying to hold him up is what they're trying to do. Well, the Saints are trying to get the ball, but 2.2 <laughs> 2 seconds left. That's right. The clock almost ran out. He was standing up. So right. Long. And that might have been by design. So Snyder will burn their last time out here with 2.2 2 seconds. They drag the pile, a 20-yard gain, out to the 36-yard line. And so let's see if uh, Snyder wants to throw a Hail Mary or just take a knee. I don't think they'll take a knee. I, I, I think a Hail Mary, a hitch and pitch, um, yep. you know, the hook and ladder, something. Halfback pass, something out of the, uh, the bag of tricks. Probably getting dialed up right now in the huddle by the Snyder Panthers. Again, Dwinger with a first half shocking score, 19 to 6 over the Snyder Panthers so far. You know, Sean, also the Saints might have been concerned about a blocked punt that could have been, or a blocked field goal could that could have been back. returned for a touchdown. Sure. Uh, they've already blocked two tonight, yeah. two extra points. So the timeout is over, and here comes Snyder on offense. Michael Hoppert is in the shotgun. He's got a single setback, two wideouts to the left side. I'd like to see the safeties a little deeper than they are. Here's a snap. He's looking at the throw. He's got some pressure. Steps up. He's going to have to tuck it and run. And he's going to have to run a long way. And he's going to be dropped near midfield. And a late flag coming out. And uh, no time left on the clock. But again, this flag could determine if there's more play. Nope. No, it's going to be against Snyder, and it'll be declined, and that's going to be the end of the first half. 19 to 6 is your halftime score. The Bishop Doiner Saints shocking the Snyder Panthers here so far. And the Snyder Panthers make their way into the locker room. The uh, Saints still on the field discussing, uh, discussing things with the officials, and it looks like that discussion is over. The official call is holding against Snyder, declined, and that'll do it for your first half. Stick around, folks. Our halftime presentation is coming right up after this 90-second break. You're listening to SAC Football on WRDF, 106.3 FM, Redeemer Radio. Diamonds are a girl's best friend, and diamonds are forever. And since 1988, Peter Franklin has been bringing you the finest diamonds imported from overseas diamond cutters. Peter Franklin Jewelers. Jewelry created from concept to completion by our master goldsmiths on staff. Peter Franklin Jewelers with three locations to serve you. New Haven, DuPont Road, and Angola. Remember, it's not just jewelry. It's Peter Franklin. Redeemer Radio gladly thanks Dr. Mark Stoner, a St. Jude parishioner, for underwriting a portion of our programming. Dr. Stoner offers comprehensive dentistry for every family member. Dr. Stoner can be found at 9830 Auburn Road. For more information regarding all your dental needs, it can be found on the web at markstonerdds.com or at 260-484-4181. Tri-State Warehousing is one of the most complete service-oriented companies in the warehousing field today. Located in Fort Wayne, Tri-State Warehousing is a 50,000 square foot dry and temperature controlled storage facility serving two-thirds of the continental U.S. with overnight rail service. The dedicated staff and specialty services of Tri-State Warehousing are known throughout the industry. For great things in store, call Tri-State Warehousing, 260-436-2010. That's 260-436-2010. Welcome back to Zollner Stadium football fans. This is SAC Football on Redeemer Radio, where the Bishop Dwinger Saints shocking the Snyder Panthers so far in the first half, 19-6 is your halftime score. Both teams in the locker rooms, and we're going to step outside the action right now and send it down to the sidelines where Nick Gray has our halftime interview. Well, thank you for uh, coming down here, Sean and Joe. It's been a great first half, pretty crazy. It's getting a little breezy down here. We also have the Bishop Dwinger band getting set up. We just had the dance squad out. 
And so uh, the student section is staying in place. They have had a wonderful e evening so far. But speaking of wonderful evening, I'm pleased to be joined by uh, Katie Burns, the Development Director for Bishop Dwyer High School. Katie, thanks for joining us once again. Sure, happy to be here. Thanks for you guys being here and all the great things Redeemer Radio does for the school. And as I sit here and see Eric Pete, I'm reminded of the great DVD that we have at school that captures the essence of the traditions of Dwanger football and also of the late, great Fred Tone. And I had somebody who just picked one up the other day and she texted me and she said, I've watched it five times in a row. It's amazing. So if you love Fred, if you love Dwanger football, you really need to make sure you get a copy of that DVD. Yeah, and last week after the game, we talked to Coach Schwarzkopf a little bit, and he mentioned that there's a letter writing campaign going on where some of the former players, if you wore that, that number of that jersey, go ahead and write a, a letter to that player that's wearing it this year. And that just sounds so much like Fred and so much like Dwanger tradition. And you know, Fred was a part of the Redeemer Radio sports crew for a brief period of time, too. That man a microphone. <laughs> you might not get it back. Well, I, um, I w listened to the game last week at home, and I heard Chris talking about the letter writing. And, um, you know, I don't remember who said, oh, that just gave me goosebumps. Maybe it was the Godfather. But I felt the same way in just talking to you right now. I got them again. It's just... There's so much tradition and there's so much meaning and there's so much pride to be part of the Dwanger family. And um, it's it's great to see everybody out here tonight uh, supporting our school. Yeah, and you know, it's a, the season goes long, you know, sometimes it's starting to get a little cold out, but yet they're here tonight and this is the Dwanger Snyder game. And you know, what a, what a classic matchup. Right, I see a lot of, um, actually it's a fall break for a lot of colleges and I think I've seen at least six or seven of, uh, last year's graduating seniors who played on the team here and so uh hoping that we can bring home a win no doubt no doubt and so talking about some other traditions at dwanger i know that today something very special happened on campus with the live rosary we have a multi-language rosary where each decade of the rosary is said in a different language and we have had a presence out on the football field that the entire student body goes out there to pray the rosary and Tuffy moves from one uh, bead to the next, which are actually balloons, and then we release the rosary into the sky. And God has blessed us with some amazing weather lately. We've been outside, I think, every year that we've done it, except for one. And it's just a very powerful thing to have all the students out there praying together and a great witness for everybody who drives by and sees and can hear the rosary being played or um, being prayed over the loudspeaker. Yeah, and the cool thing is, is they do such an excellent job of capturing it and putting it out instantly on social media. So for those of us who are sitting at work wondering what's going on in the world, man, we get a great dose of Bishop Dwanger. Well, we were laughing because there was a principal retreat up north, and we said, now go outside around 2 o'clock and look for the balloons. Maybe they'll head your way. <laughs> So I know there's a lot of other stuff going on at Dwanger, so why don't you kind of give us a brief update of, of some of the other activities? Well, this weekend, our theater department is doing their fall play called Check, Please, and we've got a great group of people um, who um, decided this year to make it a dinner theater. So two nights of this play, were well, there's going to be a dinner theater. Um, it's a story of a bunch of first dates. So on stage, they're sitting there eating during the first dates, and the, the audience is sitting at tables eating dinner as well. So that is uh, Saturday at 7 and Sunday at 2. Okay. Well, there you go, folks. There is a ton of action always 24-7 at Bishop Dwayne High School. Lights and, are always on. Yeah, and Katie's part of it. So thank you, Katie, for all that you do for us here at Redeemer Radio, like we talked about earlier, and then for Dwanger and then the Fort Wayne community. So really appreciate you being with us here tonight. Thanks a bunch. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, guys, back up to you. That's been Katie Burns, the Development Director of Bishop Dwanger High School, and this has been Nick's VIP Halftime Report. All right, thanks very much, Nick. We're going to go ahead and step out for a little break here. When we come back, we'll have stats with Brad Bodette, our little round table uh, with uh, Mark and Joe, and uh, talk about the second half of action as it is getting ready to uh, take off here in mere moments. So stick around, folks. We're back in 60 seconds. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. 
Illumination Solutions is a family-owned and operated business that specializes in LED low-voltage landscapes and holiday lighting for homes and businesses. And now we introduce our new business called The Mosquito Doctor that specializes in mosquito barrier and event spray. In addition, mosquito misting systems are also available. The phone number is the same for both businesses at 260-489-1000. Think of Briscoe Dentistry for your family's dental care. Dr. Todd Briscoe and team know that your body is more than just teeth and gums. Your oral health affects the performance ability of your entire body. And on the field or court, you want your body to perform at its best. So trust Dr. Briscoe and team to provide the ultimate in preventative, periodontal, orthodontic, restorative, and cosmetic dentistry. To optimize your body's performance, contact Dr. Briscoe at 260-486-9950 or on the web at briscoedentistry.com. Football fans, just a reminder that Hubcap Express is the expert in run flat tires and plus size fitment. If you need your rims straightened, contact Hubcap Express. Hubcap Express fixes bent rims for all your tire needs. Visit Hubcap Express, located at 606 West Coliseum Boulevard and on the web at hubcapexpress.com. 19 to 6 is your halftime score here at Zollner Stadium. The Bishop Dwyer Saints on top of the Snyder Panthers. Let's check in with first half stats, and for that, we go to Brad Bodette. Hey, thank you, Sean. Good to be in the booth with you and Joe today. Let's start off with the Snyder visiting team, Snyder Panthers. Hopper, three for four as the quarterback, 36 yards in the first half. His uh, biggest target, of course, was Mr. Hippenhammer. He had two receptions for 24 yards, half one reception for 12 in the running department. Money Woods, 10 carries for 45 yards. That includes a minus 17 on the fumble since he recovered it. He got credit for the loss of yardage. And Hopper also three carries for 31 yards. On the Dwanger side, Mr. Morris is four for nine for 52 yards, and he's not even the leading passer on the team. Mr. Effinger, one pass for 65 yards, the opening pass in the first half there. Uh, hit the favorite receivers for the Dwanger Saints, Mr. Black, two receptions for 97 yards. Steal, two receptions for 16 yards. In the running department, Morris has nine carries for 23 yards. Effinger, seven carries for 72 yards. And Hudson, five carries for 31 yards. Team totals in the first half, Snyder, 113 yards. Team total offense, Dwanger, 254 yards. In the penalty department, Snyder has five for 27. Dwanger has four penalties for 28 yards. In the punt department, two punts for Snyder. Hippenhammer has an average of 41 yards. And Mr. Booth for Dwanger, 26 yards on the coffin corner kick that he had early there in the first quarter. Back to you, Sean. All right, Brad Bodette, thanks very much for the first half update. Folks, after this 30-second break, we're going to bring in Joe Wharton and Coach Mark Watts, talk about what we saw in the first half and what we could possibly see in the second half. This is our halftime show, and you're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. Save money, save energy, and make your home more comfortable. Just call Momper Insulation to re-insulate your existing home. By adding insulation to ceilings and attics, sidewalls, crawl spaces, and basements, your home will stay warmer this winter, and you'll see a noticeable drop in your energy usage. And that translates into savings. Insulation is all we do at Momper. Expert installers and the best materials mean no gaps, no leaks, and no wasted energy. Call Momper Insulation today at 432-7543. All right, back to our halftime show here. Listening to a little Neil Diamond. Special thanks to uh, Sam Tallarico. For the haystack. That one on yeah, the haystack. haystack. Getting it done. Love it. Sweet Caroline on the uh, PA here at Zollner Stadium. Uh, but let's talk about the uh, the first half of action here, guys. Uh, again, 19-6 is your halftime score. Uh, Dwinger on top of a uh, really a shocked uh, Snyder Panthers team. Joe Wharton, what's your takeaway on the first half so far? Well, I thought uh, Jason Garrett, the offense coordinator, did tell us that, you know, listen, he's going to pull out all stops tonight. We saw that early first play. Of the offense play of the game was the uh, halfback pass. I hope now with a lead that he continues that gunslinger mentality in his play calling. He doesn't just play not to lose. I right. think you have to stay aggressive. You have to keep it fun for Eddie Morris. You, gotta, you have to keep the Snyder defense on their heels, uh, not knowing what to expect. Um, so that's my first take. I, I like the play calling. I like Eddie Morris, what he's done. I like how the offense has rallied around Eddie Morris, the junior, getting his first start tonight. Let's bring in Mark Watts, who's got the best seat in the house, down on the sidelines. Mark, what are you seeing down there first well, half? First of all, in the first half, 
it was probably the fastest game that I've watched. It, the intensity and the speed of the game is the is the fastest I've seen all year. I think if I'm Snyder, I'm going in there, Coach Tipman, and say, guys, defensively, we've got to pick it up. We're better than this. Offensively, we started doing it in the second quarter, but defensively, we've got to wake up because Dwanger is just catching them off, and they're just not playing well. That's all there is to it. And the two defensive tackles for Snyder are not really playing that well. They're not being dominant at all. If I'm Coach Schwarzkopf, I'm saying the score is 0-0. Hey, uh, that 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 first half is over. We've got to win the second half. We're going to come out with a win. So I agree with you, Joe. They've got to be aggressive. I think that first play, that that uh, halfback pass, set the tone for the first half. Well, and the kids like that stuff. Oh yeah, that's fun. That's football. The and kids it, like it, and it works. You know, that's the other thing. It worked. They yeah, got absolutely. them down there. I thought the biggest key of the whole first half was, and Joe, you mentioned it. Dwanger came out and had that long drive. They had third and 12 or third and 13. Third, 14, yeah. All right, and they, even though they didn't come away with any score, they ran down with the win. And, again, it's significant. The win is significant if it's at your back. But they basically ran out the second quarter. Snyder didn't have the ball again. I, I agree, and I wrote that down in my notes here, that to me that was one of the top plays of the first half for Bishop Dwanger. Third and 14 on Dwanger's drive after, right after Snyder marched down and scored. If the Saints go three and out there, guys, and punt it back, uh, punt it back to Snyder, they'll be on a short field, Snyder, and can potentially take it back, and all momentum now shifts. Well, and think about what actually set that up. On the previous play, they were going across the middle uh, to Steele, who had the catch, was separated, and went down in a crumple right there at midfield. So did they slack? Did they give up? Oh, man, our star receiver is hurt. They didn't give up whatsoever. Uh, you know, the next play, Effinger dragging tacklers with him yeah. across midfield and getting that key first down. Yeah. yeah. And, and the uh, thing that I'm really thinking about here is Snyder's been hitting the mouth for the first time probably all year. I don't know if they've been behind all year, especially like this. So right. we're going to see, and we talked about in tailgate talk, until you come up against somebody that knocks you in the mouth, Let's see how they're going to come back. I think they will. I mean, they're a championship team. Oh, yeah, a lot of football left. Again, we've got two state champions out here, gentlemen, so they both know how to win. But Snyder, for the first time, is going to have to uh, show how they're going to handle adversity. It's going to be interesting. We're going to step out for a little 30-second break. When we come back, the third quarter is right around the corner, but we're going to check in with Nick Gray as well to get some other halftime scores from around the area. 19-6 19-6 to 6 is your halftime score here at Zollner Stadium. The Bishop Dwinger Saints over the Snyder Panthers. Lots of football left tonight here. Stick around, folks. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. Successful coaches make changes to succeed by calling timeouts to make needed adjustments. For it's clear, no change equals no change. This is David X with Union Savings Bank in Fort Wayne. I started mortgage lending in 1988. Since then, I've been trusted by thousands of area homeowners. I offer low closing costs and great rates on home lending so you can save big money both up front and over the life of your loan. Make a change for the better when purchasing a different home or refinancing to lower your payment. Call timeout, get your mortgage date in hand. Call me anytime for your free mortgage checkup. And make sure you compare. Call David X, 418-6191. Member FDIC, Plowsing Lender. Back to live action here at Zollner Stadium where the Bishop Dwinger Saints are on top of the Snyder Panthers, 19-6. Let's check in with some scores and highlights from around the area with Nick Gray. Well, the first highlight I want to report on, guys, is we just got the Redeemer Radio t-shirts out and live in this Bishop Dwinger Saints crowd up, and not like they needed it, but we're ready to go for the second half. Um, right now around the league, we've got uh, Bishop Bluers beating Southside 14-0. Concordia's up at Carroll, and they're winning 20-3. Just started the second half. Homestead Wayne's tied at sevens. Northside's beaten uh, Northrop 14 to seven. DeKalb's beaten Belmont seven to six. New Haven's beaten uh, East Noble 27 to 14. And Woodland was up on South Adams 15 to zero. So that's what we got for you right now, guys. Back up to you. All righty, very good. Well, that's going to uh, give us a few more minutes here, Joe, as they reset the clock uh, to talk about what we might be able to see in the third and fourth quarter today. Uh, again, when we uh, look at the scoreboard, 19 to six is your score. Bishop Dwinger on top of the uh, Snyder Panthers. Snyder gets the ball back here in the third quarter. Uh, I got plenty to say, guys. <laughs> Here okay, we go. Yeah. let's just look at this. Uh, the Saints averaged six yards rushing in the first half. The Panthers were allowing 1.9 yards per carry. The Saints had 
254 total yards of offense in the right. first half. Yeah. The, the Snyder Panthers defense is only allowing 217 yards per game. Total. Yeah. Total. Um, what impressed me, uh, really impressed me, obviously Eddie Morris did, but uh, the offensive line. Right. The offensive line I've seen tonight is night and day better than what I the offensive line I saw last week against Lewis. Right. And uh, they're getting the two guys that have been so disruptive this year, McDowell and Johnson, the two defense, big, huge monster defensive tackles for Snyder that have been disrupting everybody all year. They are getting them blocked. The other thing is, Sean, I want to point out the, the Snyder Panthers, their low score of the game of uh, the season, the lowest point total they've scored all year is 23 points was their low, and that was against Homestead. And then their second lowest point total was 33, and that came against Southside. Wow. All right. Mark Watts, uh, again, uh, your thoughts on the upcoming action here. Well, I talked to Coach Swarskoff, and he said, I thought about you and Joe all week. We put in that trap that we've talked about about 10 years ago, Joe. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. It was so good for us yes. back at St. John's New Haven. And, and, in fact, we were coaching at St. John's New Haven, and we went to uh, see him, and he used it at uh, Northside. The guy at Penn used it that I coached against, and I used it, and we put it in, and it was great work for the St. John well, uh, Raiders, and that's what he said that they needed to do. They're running right at him. They could trap him. It's so fast, Joe. You know how fast we right. it has to be run. One second, you have to cross the line of scrimmage with the ball. Yeah. And, Mark, why did we put it in at St. John's New Haven? Because there was a big bruiser defensive tackle in CYO named Tony Springman. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. right. That was disrupting everybody. We said, Coach, how can we – you trap him. Here's how you do it. And oh, we yep. did it, and we trapped him for a touchdown in the first play. I, I love to hear that he's pulling, going deep into the and dusting off the uh, uh, the old pages of the playbook, Mark, uh, from that long ago. He is. I think that's an, uh, a great point, and that's what he, you know. That's the experience that he has. But uh, that's why those do, two defensive tackles have not been as disruptive tonight because that trap hits so fast, and that's how you practice it out there, fans. You just practice it and practice it and practice it because it has to be like lightning. Uh, and you can see why that's worked all day. And I think that was that 14-yarder, Joe, too. Yeah. Uh, we're yeah. on third and 14. So uh, pretty interesting stuff down here. Back to you guys. All right, Mark Watts, thanks very much for that update right there. 12 minutes on the clock right now as the Snyder Panthers take the field. Here come the Bishop Wenger Saints to kick off. And we are just about to start third quarter action live from Zollner Stadium. C.J. Booth will be kicking into the win, so the Saints will have the win in the back or in the fourth quarter. The ball is going to be put at the 40-yard line. Again, C.J. Booth kicking into the wind. Hip and hammer back deep near his own five-yard line. It'll be interesting to see what uh, Mr. Dwenger does with this one. The whistle blows, the teams are ready, and the ball is now in the air. It's a low liner taken by an up back near the 35-yard line. Being patient, looking for a block or two, won't find it to get off to about the 38-yard line, and that's where he is stopped. So decent field position here for the Snyder Panthers as they start the third quarter. Jacob Fabini on the stop. And uh, let's see here. Obviously, uh, everybody knows the critical aspect of the first drive of the third quarter this is your tone setter here, Joe, not only for the offensive team with the ball, but also your defense. Yeah, you know, we, we had... talked about that during break, and this yeah. is going to be huge for the Saints to see if they can stop because if Snyder scores here, momentum immediately shifts to the white jerseys. That's right. Twins to the right side. Twins to the left. Quarterback alone in the backfield. Now man in motion across the line of scrimmage. They fake the jet sweep. Quarterback keeper through the middle. He's got the seam. Dives for the first down. And he will have it out to the 49-yard line. Hoppert's been very effective running the ball tonight. And one of the things that I think the Snyder Panthers need to do in the second half is try to get Mac Hippenhammer more touches. Right. First and 10 from the 49 now. One down and one first down. And now we've got movement against the Snyder line, and that's going to move it back five yards. Hoppert has four carries for 41 yards, averaging over 10 yards per carry. So Snyder will be playing behind the sticks now, first and 15. They put the ball back at the 44-yard uh, yard line. And here at the uh, beginning of the third quarter. 
Opening drive of the third quarter for the Snyder Panthers here. Here's a snap. Give to Money Woods. Tries his way through the middle. He's going to be stopped and wrangled by about nine gold helmets. He maybe gets two out to the 46. Just no hole there for Money Woods. Big Sam Hoss Henry filling the hole there. There he was. No huddle offense now for Snyder. On second and 13, single setback, twins to the right. Here's a snap. Again, pass. pass, play action, throws over the middle, intercepted. It is picked off by Dwinger at midfield, running back the third 45. He's down to the 40, taken down into the 38-yard line. Isaac Bloom picks off his second pass of the season. Again, where the Saints have really suffered this season is in the turnover. They came into this game only plus one on the season in the turnover ratio. They have two turnovers here tonight. That they do. So an ill-advised pass that time from Hoppert over the middle. And Isaac Bloom with a nice return that time, taking the ball back into Snyder territory, down to the 37-yard line. Hoppert came into this game with six touchdown passes and five interceptions. That's number six for Hoppert on this 2016 season. So the opening drive for Snyder is not good. And here comes Bishop Dwinger, led by the junior on offense. Here's a snap from a pro set. Give to the tailback. Trap play through the middle. Dragging tacklers with him. Is that Hudson on the carry? Wow. I love that trap play right there. And, and I also love seeing that running back lower his pad level and deliver blows to the defenders who are coming up trying to make a stop. A nine-yard run by Hudson. Takes the ball inside the Snyder 30 down to the 29-yard line. Brings up a second and one for the Saints. Amon Clark checks into the game. He will be split out to the right side. Split backs, one wide out left. Here is a snap. Option left side. Here's the pitch. He gets to the line. He's wow. dragging tacklers with him inside the 30 down to the 26-yard line. Is that Effinger? That's Mitch Effinger. Wow. He's running really focused tonight, really hard. He's determined as a senior to get a win. And that is a first and 10 coming up for the Bishop Dwinger Saints just outside the 25. 75 yards tonight on the ground for Effinger. That's a 9.4 yard average against a defense that was averaging 1.9 yards per rush this season. Here come the Saints on first and 10. Twins left and twins right. Single setback is Effinger. Eddie Morris, the junior quarterback in the shotgun. Now man in motion to the right side. Here's a snap. Give right through the middle. He's gone left side. Effinger at the 10, the 5. He got it. Down. The Saints gash Snyder to open the third quarter in a big way. 25 to 6. Now your score. 25 yard trap play. Effinger and nobody touched him. Score for the Saints. That's huge. If you want to talk about third quarter first possession success, the Saints had it on defense and the Saints offense had it as well. Kudos to the Saints. Mark Watts, you were down there. Yes, uh, I'm just telling you, uh, that trap play means a lot to me personally because uh, Coach Borchoff and I have, have talked X's and O's a long time, and for him to relate that to me, and it's working all night. They've not adjusted to it yet. Let's see what happens. Two-point conversion, guys. Yeah, the Saints offense is on the field trying for two. Morris under center now. And now we've got movement on both sides of the line, and a flag comes out. <laughs> it's, and this is not what the Saints needed. The extra points have just been a real yeah. dumpster fire, well, haven't they? they have. They've had two blocks, so I, I think their confidence is a little low. And, um, and so they try for two here to try and get a little advantage. And another penalty against the Saints, and they move it back five yards. This will be now out to the eight-yard line. And let's see what happens here. Amon Clark does check in for the Saints. I'd like to see maybe Amon Clark go out as a receiver and try and find a mismatch out there. Yeah, he's going to be slot right with black, wide right. Two wide outs left. Here's a snap. He flows to the right, looking for some room, looks to throw, throws the ball back across, incomplete. He was trying to get Amon Clark, but uh, just had a bad angle, Morris did, and just kind of threw it into the dirt. So the PAT is no good. Your score remains 25-6. to six. Saints on top with 9.26 to go in the third quarter. We're back in 30. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. 
A clean office space, okay, that's an easy choice, and choosing the right company to clean your business is easy too. Siocas Professional Cleaning is the choice of a lot of Fort Wayne companies because of the 100% satisfaction guarantee. Siocas does it with built-in check systems to make sure your business is cleaned beyond your expectations every time. First impressions are critical, so make sure yours is always the best with professional cleaning from Siocas. The best people, the best service. 483-2112 or online at siocas.com. Back to live action here at Zollner Stadium in the third quarter. It is the Bishop Dwyer Saints shocking the Snyder Panthers 25-6. to They've done it all night long, and here they set up the score off of the interception, and uh, they took it to the house for six. The PAT was no good, but 25-6 uh, to is your score here in the third quarter. Very exciting game, Sean. Oh. Uh, unexpected. Um, I, I was one of those people that came to this game with not very high expectations. Right. Yeah, the offensive line uh, has really done the job for Eddie Morris, and Eddie Morris and his playmakers. And effing are running the ball. Oh, absolutely. He is a workhorse tonight. And they are doing a fine job here as C.J. Booth prepares to kick this one away. They swap sides for the uh, kickoff team here. Effinger has hit the 100-yard mark on with 9.26 here to go in the third period. Going to have a huge night if it keeps up. Here is the kick. And it's a low liner angling towards the sideline, taken by an up back going across the field at the 20, looking for some oh, there it in is. the middle. He's got some room. He's at midfield. He's wrangled, still on his feet, and he's finally wrangled in Saints territory down to the 36-yard line. Wow, what a run there by a determined Snyder Panther. A 44-yard run back by the Snyder Panthers sets them up with a very short field down to the 36-yard line for in Saints territory. Number 16 is not even on our roster. I don't even know who that is. Great return that time by a uh, Snyder Panther. That's uh, Demarius Ridley, number 16. There you go. Not on my roster. Okay. Here come the Snyder Panthers with a short field now. First and 10 in Saints territory. Here's the snap. Give to Money Woods, looking for some room. Gets inside the 35, stays on his feet, down to about the 33-yard line. Isaac Bloom on the stop for Bishop Dwinger, along with Bart Tittman. And yeah, we've got a Saint on the ground. Uh, tell me it's not Winkle, John. It's, there's a four on his jersey. That's not a good That is sign. Winkle, John. Weagle John is down on the field as both teams go to their sidelines and huddle up. He's being attended to. Coach comes out to take a look, and that means we're going to go ahead and step out for a little break here. 8.59 to go in the third quarter. Saints 25, Snyder 6 with an injury timeout on the field. You're listening to Redeemer Radio, WRDF 106.3 FM, Northeast Indiana, Fort Wayne. Amore's Pizza proudly supports Catholic sports. Try our Chicago-style stuffed pizza made with top-quality meats and cheeses. Your mouth will taste the difference. We also offer gluten-free options or many unique items. Amore's Pizza is located at 933 East DuPont Road, right off Coldwater. Full menu and specials can be found at amorespizza.net or call 490-9099. Amore's Pizza, where our food is made with love. Back to live third quarter action here at Zollner Stadium while uh, young Mr. Winkle Jones being attended to, still on the carpet, now finally sitting up. And uh, let's recap things. 25 to 6 is your score. Saints on top with 8.59 to go here in the third quarter as Winkle John makes it to his feet now. Sean, something to uh, talk about here. In the third quarter right now, the Snyder Panthers have the wind at their back, and it's significant. Yeah. With 8.59 to go here in the third period, the longer the Saints can keep this clock running in the third period, the more it's going to benefit them because then the Snyder Panthers in the fourth quarter, if they're trying to mount a comeback, will not have the wind at their back. Yeah, and that, that really hurts. Winkle John is the injured player. He's hobbling off uh, with some help. Yeah. Uh, that hurts the defense. We, he came back tonight, and he's been playing great, by the way. He has. And uh, Isaac Cornwell uh, will probably be the young man. Here comes Isaac Cornwell into the game to fill that middle linebacker position. So, again, it is a Snyder ball. They're facing a third or second and seven now. Ball resting at the 32-yard line of the Saints. Off of a great kick return. 
Here's a snap. Give to Money Woods around the left side. He's got the angle. Looking for the sidelines. Tries to cut back. He will have enough for a first down and a few more. And he's going to be brought down near the 22-yard line. Yeah, this Snyder football team, they, you, you, you know now why they run for 333 yards a game. These guys can run. The guys up front can block. This is a well-coached team. And very fundamentally sound. First and 10, right outside the red zone. Ball resting at the 22-yard line of the Saints. Single setback as Woods. Hoppert from the shotgun. And this time a quarterback read option. He's stuck right oh. at the line of scrimmage and sat down. That's Isaac Bloom. Isaac Bloom, number 39, along with Hoss Henry, making a big stop there for the defense. Isaac Bloom's one of those players over the last five games that's really just come on strong. Yeah. Maybe started the season a little slow, but we call his name a lot during these games. He records a tackle for loss there, bringing up a second and 11. Same formation, double tight, single setback. Hopper looks to throw, going over the middle. Seam pass, nearly picked, but incomplete that time. Not not a good pass by Hopper. It was off the mark. Alec Watercutter made a diving attempt to try an interception, to intercept it, but was, was not successful. So that uh, burns the down, and it brings up a third and 11 now for Snyder. One would have to think we're looking at four down territory for Snyder as they're down 25-6 to six here in the third quarter. Let's see what they do here on third. Another option that gives it through the seam. He's got some room. He won't have enough for a first down, but good positive yards right through the middle down to the 15-yard line is Money Woods. Right. It's, it's four down territory for sure. You, the ball now sits on the Saints 15-yard line. And Snyder Panthers are right up to the line of scrimmage, ready to go here on fourth and a long three. Fourth and three for the Snyder Panthers. Same formation, double tights and a single setback. Hoppert in the shotgun. Here's a snap, another read option. They tried the side. He's hitting the backfield, getting wrangled, and he is going to be stopped. Wow, what a stop for the Saints. No good. No good that time. And who comes up from the bottom of the pile, Joe? Number 39. Isaac Bloom. And wow. what did he do? He held on until... Ten other gold helmets can come and make a stop. That is actually a recorded tackle for loss back at the 16-yard line. And the Saints defense hold once again, giving their offense a fresh set of downs, first and ten from their own 16. That is significant, Joe, because that drive started with such a short field for Snyder. Right. And they weren't able to convert. The Saints did not back down. Even when their general, field general, Winklejohn, goes off, what do they do? They rally behind him and make a big stop. Here come the Saints on offense, led by Eddie Morris. End around. Here's the pitch. Trying to find a seam. Hit in the backfield. Won't find much there. As the, it might even be a loss on the play for, I think that was Mike Hake. No, they fell forward. Yeah, gain of uh, two or three. All right. Sean, this Saints defense coming. We've been talking about the Dwayne, uh, Snyder defense. Saints defense comes in as the number two defense in the SAC. They're only allowing 195 yards rushing or 195 yards per game, only 75 yards rushing per game is what that Saints defense gives up. All right, Amon Clark checks in for the Saints. Going to be a trips package to the left side, one wide right, and a single setback. Here's a snap, pitch, left side, looking for some room, cutting it upfield is Hake. Or is that Effinger? I'm sorry, 32 and 33. Effinger, that's Effinger. Effinger 33, not 32. And Effinger comes up a little gimpy. A little gimpy. He's going to make his way off and get a little rest here. It's going to bring up third and three now for the Saints with 6.20 to go here in the third quarter. The Saints on top, 25-6. to six. The Saints in the first half were four out of six on third down tries. Ball resting at their 23-24 uh, yard line. They need three yards to keep the drive alive. Trips package to the right, one wide left. Morris in the shotgun. Here's a pitch, right side. He's got the edge and more. A first down coming up for the Saints. A flag coming out. That might be a hold against the Saints. Boy, it's right right, right at where a receiver and a defensive back were wrangling yep, over there, and you why, have to believe that's a hold. That's why I said it, and that's exactly what it's going to be. Now that'll be a spot foul, uh, which was beyond the sticks. And let, they're going to take that. They should take that back to the 20-yard line, it looks like, from where they're going to start the march. And that's going to bring up a third and long, third and seven it looks like for the Saints from the 20, their own 20-yard line. So 6-0-1 left here in the third quarter. 
Call that a third and long six or a short seven. Now a man in motion across the line of scrimmage to the far side. Looks to throw. Here's a little screen, and it's dropped. Incomplete that time. Watercutter can't keep his hands on it, and that's going to be an incomplete pass and bring up fourth and long. Punting situation. C.J. Booth is the punter tonight, guys. Remember, he's only had one opportunity to punt. Uh, Pachelny, again, not dressed for this ball game, so C.J. Booth gets the punting duties. Going to have two men back deep for Snyder. That's Demarius Ridley and, of course, Mac Hippenhammer. They're going to stand near the midfield stripe, maybe a little bit off. And C.J. Booth is inside his 10, getting ready to kick this one away. Here is a snap. It's a great snap. Gets the kick away. It's a high floater. It's going to be short. Get a hit and take a Snyder bounce and be touched up near the 35-yard line of Dwenger. 15-yard punt. Yikes. Let's see if the Saints defense can get it done again. They did it once. Let's see if they can do it again. 5.40 5.40 now on the clock. Saints leading 25-6. to six. This is third quarter action from Zollner Stadium. The Snyder needs a score here. They've got the wind at their back. And in the fourth quarter, they will have the wind in their face. Passing attack really has not been there tonight for Snyder. And we thought we'd see Hippenhammer. Three of five uh, passing is Hopper. First and ten, man in motion across the line of scrimmage. Jet sweep to the side, trying to break contain. He won't find much. Driving, getting out of bounds. That's Hippenhammer on the jet sweep. Gain of four, maybe five. Well played by Amon Clark, who's playing cornerback right now for Tommy Steele, who left the game injured. Did a nice job fighting off the block and pushing Hippenhammer out of bounds. Call that a gain of five down to the 20-yard line. No huddle offense now for Snyder. He's got twins to the left side, one wide right, and a single setback as Money Woods. Hopper barks out the signal. And here we go on second and five. Here's a snap. And a give to the tailback. And he tries to find some room. That's Covington, actually, number 23 on the carry. Going to be very close to a first down, I believe just shy. So third and one coming up now for Snyder. Haas Henry and Jacob Fabini on the stop for the Saints. And the clock continues to run. About five minutes left here in the third quarter. Again, wind at the back right now for Snyder. Looking to the sideline for the play. Pistol formation, Covington in the backfield with Hoppert. He's going to be offset to the right. Twins to the right side. And here's a quarterback option. He decides to keep it. Breaks one tackle. Gets to the edge. He's got the first down and more. He's going to go in. And does he get out of bounds? Oh, he's pushed out of bounds right before his score. A huge run that time by David Hopper. He evades one tackle and scampers down the sideline for a 21-yard run. Steven Nix had him in the backfield, did a nice job, had his arms wrapped around him. But we've talked about Snyder missing some tackles tonight. That's a that's a tackle Steven Nix has to make. Oh, you got to make that one. Hopper doing a fine job, very athletic move out there, getting out of the grasp of Nix and setting up a first and goal from the six-yard line now for the Snyder Panthers. Going to be an eye formation now. Covington is the tailback. Here's the snap, and it's going to be a play action. Throw out to the flats. It is caught at the far, uh, sideline. Touchdown, goal line. Number six on the catch that time for the Snyder Panthers. That's Stroud. And the Snyder Panthers score here with 440 remaining in the third quarter. That's Hopper's seventh touchdown pass on this season. A six-yarder. And they are back in business. 12 points on the board now. As DeAndre Stroud, 5'11", senior, makes that catch at the goal line and crosses the plane. And this is a uh, this is a big point after right here. Boozman in to kick this one up. Here's a snap. The hold is good. The kick is up, and it looks good from here, and it is. 25 to 13 is your score. Snyder Panthers score on a short field opportunity. And we've got 440 remaining here in the third quarter. We'll go ahead and keep things right here. Folks, just a reminder that Historic St. Felix Catholic Center is open for retreats. Located in Huntington, Indiana on 30 scenic acres with plenty of recreational areas and a serene Blessed Mother Grotto. St. Felix Catholic Center is the perfect location for a single day of prayer to overnight retreats. You can plan your visit 
at www.sfcatholiccenter.com. While we have a couple seconds here, let's check in on the sidelines with Nick Gray, who's got uh, hopefully some updates from around the area, the SAC and whatnot. Nick Gray, what do you have for us? Well, glad I'm paying attention, guys. Anyhow, Bishop Lures is now beating Southside 21-0. Concordia is really having a great evening tonight. They're beating uh, Carroll 26-3. Homestead right now is up on Wayne 21-7. And they got Northrop beating Northside 21-14 in the third quarter, guys. Wow. The Cows beat Belmont 7-6. New Haven still up on East Noble 27-14. And uh, another score, Chair Busco's beating West Noble 21-0. So back up to you guys. All right, thanks very much, Nick Gray. Here is the Snyder kickoff. Boozman puts his leg into it. High end over kick going well into the end zone. Had the win with him, and that's going to be a touchback. So the Saints on the previous drive had stalled. Let's see if they're able to keep something together here and move the chains down the field for a possible score here with 440 remaining in the third quarter. Again, your score, 25 to 13. Snyder came into the contest undefeated at 7-0. Dwinger sitting at 5-2, facing adversity at every step this season. And so far, the junior quarterback, Eddie Morris, doing a fine job managing this game. And so far, that trap play that they've been running has been run to perfection tonight for the Bishop Winger Saints. Here's a man in motion to the left side. Here's a snap, and they give to Jordan Hudson around the edge, right. He makes the corner, dives forward. Uh, a positive gain past the 20, but not much more. Right, he, he has a tendency, Jordan Hudson, to bounce it outside. He wants to bounce it. I really felt like there was a hole there. If he just gets that pad level low and gets through there, uh, to pick up some nice yardage. That'll be a gain of, yeah, we'll call it a gain of two out to the 22-yard line, maybe three. We'll call it two, bringing up a second and eight for the Saints. At what point do you see another razzle-dazzle play, Sean? Right. We talk about half. Keep playing calls like a gunslinger. Play to uh, Call it to win it. Trips package to the left side, one wide right and a single wing right. Here's a snap, quarterback decides to keep it, bounces outside of the left side, trying to make the corner, looking for something there. Tackle for loss and a big sack on the day for the Snyder defense. That was another run that was supposed to go off tackle. They pulled a, 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 the wing back over to trap to kick out the end. And again, uh, Morris that time wants to bounce it outside. That's the last two plays. These running backs are trying to bounce it, follow, the, get into the hole and go. That's a loss of six on the play, back to the 16-yard line. That brings up a third and 14 for the Saints as Amon Clark checks out. And Tittman checks in. Critical down here for the Saints as Morris is in the shotgun with a single setback and trips to the right. Here's the snap. He flows right, draw play, looking for room through the middle. This one is caught up and nothing there. Yeah, big stop by Snyder. I mean, a three and out. They're going to end up with great field position again because we're, the Saints are going to punt into the wind. Yes. And remember, the last time we did this, it was a 15-yard punt, and the Saints or the Snyder Panthers started their drive on a 35. They could score another time here in this third quarter with 3.20 to go. Ball is resting at the 15 as C.J. Booth comes in to punt this one away. Momentum shifting clearly to the Snyder Panthers at this point as their deep backs are standing in Dwinger territory. High snap, but he's got the ball. Here's the kick. Low liner, and it's going to... Oh, it hit a, it Panther. Hit a Panther. That ball is live. Dwinger recovers. No. It not did. in high school. Brad's wow. an official. Brad, not in high school? Not in high school. All right. So that well, Brad is not said a live he didn't ball. think it touched him. I thought oh, it went okay. off the back of the Panther. Right. Okay, so the ball did not touch the Panther, but the bad news for the Saints fan is that the Snyder is now set yeah. up first and 10 yeah. at the Dwinger 27-yard line. 12-yard punt. A 12-yard punt that time 15 by 15-yard and 12. That wind is is the real deal out there on the field, and it's still at the Snyder backs with 2.55 to go here in the third quarter. Snyder checking the sidelines, double tights, single setback. Hopper in the shotgun. Here is a snap. Money Woods around the right side, waiting for his blocks. And he gets to the line of scrimmage, falls forward for maybe a yard, if any. Isaac Bloom, Hoss Henry. Haven't called Frankie Yanko's name a lot here. Well, he got up from that pile at the bottom. He could have been in there. Yeah. 
And let's see. So they do give him forward progress, falling forward for a gain of two. Brings up a second and eight. Ball just inside the 25-yard line. Two wideouts to the left at the time. Hippenhammer in the slot left. Here's a snap. He looks left, going to throw. Goes out to the uh, Hippenhammer. He's hit immediately and dropped after the catch by Black. Bradley Black delivered a nice blow there on Hippenhammer. Hippenhammer's running over here to the sideline. I don't know if he's coming out or not. He is coming out. Yeah, he got a stinger on that one. He's holding his uh, arm up a little bit there. And that could be a development we need to keep an eye on. And Mark Watts is very good about that down there. Third and three now for the Snyder Panthers. Ball resting at the Dwinger 20-yard line. Here is the snap. They give it through the middle, looking for some room. Money Woods, he's still on his feet. Down to the 15. That is going to be a first and 10 coming up inside the red zone for the Snyder Panthers. The Panthers have converted on their last two third down tries. So a first and 10 here for the Snyder Panthers inside the red zone at the 15-yard line. Hopper barking out the signals with a single setback, two wideouts to the right side. Here's the snap. They go through the middle again. Here's a give to Money Woods. He breaks one tackle, bounces it out to the right side. Good pursuit, hitting the backfield, still on his feet, and finally taken down near the 14. Isaac Cornwell, McGeary on the stop. <laughs> After all that running, a gain of six inches. Maybe one. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Okay, under a minute to play here in the third quarter. Snyder now officially facing a second and nine. Looks over to the sidelines, taking his time as Hoppert now. Two wideouts left and a single setback. Here is the snap. Play action, no, give to the first man through. Again, that's Money Woods grinding it out inside the 11, maybe down to the 10. Steven Nix on the stop. That'll bring up a third and five now for the uh, Snyder Panthers. And that may do it for this quarter. As they take their time, we're about 15 seconds to go, and I don't know that they're going to get this play off. They go, come up to the line with an I formation. Hoppert under center now. Here is the snap. Give to the tailback. Off tackle, right side. Gets to the five. Gets pulled back. Forward progress inside the five-yard line. And I believe that should be enough for a first down and the end of the third quarter. So when we come back, the Snyder Panthers are knocking on the door with 12 minutes to play. 25 to 13 is your score. Saints on top and Snyder threatening. Stick around, folks. We're back in 30 seconds. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. You can help support your Catholic parish or school with Notre Dame Federal Credit Union's Elevate program. You'll not only enjoy excellent personal service and save money with your new loan or credit card, you'll also be giving money back to the participating parish or school you care about. Let Notre Dame Federal Credit Union elevate all participating parishes or schools. Elevate can be reached at 844-230-6611 or visit us online at ndelevate.com independent from the university. Well, back to live action. 12 minutes left to go in this contest. And what a contest it has been. The Bishop Winger Saints capitalizing on opportunities. And 25 to 13 is your score. But the Snyder Panthers with that never say die attitude and that vaunted rushing attack so far have put them back in the game 25 to 13. They are knocking on the door here to start the fourth quarter. Third quarter goes to the Panthers, 88 yards of offense for the Panthers in the third quarter. The Saints only had 37. First and goal from the five yard line for the Snyder Panthers to start the fourth quarter. Hoppert is in the shotgun formation. He's got an offset eye. Double tight ends, one wide out to the left side. Here's a give to the tailback, tries to find his way through the line. Being patient is Money Woods. He'll fall forward inside the five to about the three. Hippenhammer now back off the bench and checking in for the Snyder Panthers. That's a big development for Snyder to get Hippenhammer back in the game. Well, it'd be a great opportunity to try and throw him a slant at this point. But, uh, you know, again, if you could run at two and three yards a clip, you don't need much here. 
Second and goal from the three. Here's a snap. Give to the tailback right through the middle. Money Woods, touchdown. Yeah, short fields. Uh, 20, that drive started on the 25-yard line. Yep. The drive before that started on the 35-yard line. So the, the Snyder Panthers have to go 60 total yards to get two touchdowns. And uh, that's the effect of not having your normal punter and having asking your second guy to punt into a strong win. Right. Saints offense has to start playing. Uh, really have to start uh getting after it and moving the ball down the field. they got to flip the field, Sean. 11-24 to go here in the fourth quarter. Boozman on to chip this one in. And it is up. And it is no, no good. good. No good. Wide left. That's his second miss on the night. So the score remains 25-19. to 19, A six-point deficit here starting the fourth quarter. Saints clinging to that six-point lead. Boozman coming into the game was 35 of 38. It only missed three PATs all season, and he's missed two here tonight. Right. Let's check in down on the sidelines with Coach Mark Watts. Well, when I talked to Coach Schwarzkopf, he wanted the win in the fourth quarter. He understands this field position, so he kind of withered the storm, all right? Uh, so now he's got the win. I think he feels comfortable about it. Snyder's coming on, but I'm telling you, this win is making a significant difference, especially in the kicking game. And you guys just saw it in that third quarter. Well, you're right, Mark. Those flags on top of the goalpost have not stopped moving all night, Joe. No, they're almost straight out. Yep. And I'll say this. The Saints have seven players going both ways. How much is left in the tank right. in the fourth quarter? Yep. I mean, the uh, Snyder Panthers have zero players going both ways. The Saints have seven. Let's see how much the Saints can get done here in this offensive possession. And they're missing Winkle, John. They are missing Winkle, John. You're absolutely right, Mark. Boozman uh, teased the ball up at the 40-yard line. Again, kicking against the wind. So he's kicking right to left on your radio dial. Wind out of the north. And let's see what he does here. Almost lining up to uh, kick it across the field. And that's exactly what he does to an up back. Fair catch called for, and it's going to be caught near the 36-yard line. So no return that time, but good field position coming up for the Saints. First and 10 at their own 36. Let's see if that offensive line can find that push. The offensive line for the Saints can find that push that they were getting in the first half. Let's see if they can do that, eat up the clock, and get down and put some more points on the board. Six-point lead is not much when you're playing Snyder. Oh, that's precisely right. 25-19 to 19 is your score. Lots of time left. And here come the Saints on offense, led by the junior quarterback, Eddie Morris. He's in the shotgun with a trips package to the right. Quarterback keeper this time. He's swallowed up and hammered in the backfield. Great tackle for loss by that Snyder defense. Big number 77 that time. Shot the gap and came right through, Joe. Big 77. That's Zach McDowell. The, one of those defensive tackles we talk about came in untouched and uh, made a stop. Um, so we'll call that a loss of two. Brings up a second and 12 here for the Saints. Amon Clark checks into the game. He's going to be in the slot to the left. Morris is under center this time with a single setback. Amon Clark in motion to the right side. Give to the tailback through the middle. He is stuffed yeah. at the line of scrimmage and driven back. I really, Sean, my opinion is this. You this defense is playing so fired up, they're coming straight at you. They're bringing people, and they are playing for another three and out. Now you've run, run. Now you have an obvious pass situation. Right. I don't think that's a good situation for Eddie Morris. Throw on first down, trick yeah. play, play action on first down, something to keep the chains moving. Run, run, pass. Uh, I don't know. I hope they could be successful here. So here come the Saints on uh, third and 12 now. Late substitution coming in for the Saints. There's a and penalty. There's a penalty. A uh, player substitution foul against the Saints. He came on the field and jumped right back off. And the Saints are now moving backwards as the wheels have come off the Saints offense here late in this contest. No doubt about it. Now you're asking Eddie Morris to, to try and convert on a third and 17 with no momentum, really, That's in the right. blue jerseys or the gold helmets. So they move the ball back inside the 30, and a timeout is called by Bishop Dwenger. And they want to talk about a few things. And now, wait a minute. The wait a minute. offense is now lining up. 
Now, uh, we've got some confusion on the field as the referee clearly called for a Dwinger timeout. And the offense is now lined up, but the defense is over in the huddle. Mark Watts, what'd you see down there? Okay, uh, Schwarzkopf saying that he didn't call one, but the referee is pointing to Dwinger's quarterback said that he gave him the timeout uh, signal. So I think that's why he gave him the timeout because the quarterback signaled the timeout. That's worst call. Okay. And now the offense is at the line of scrimmage, ready to go. And now here comes Coach Schwarzkopf onto the field. He really wants to talk about this. Look, if we're going to be charged for a timeout, then I want a timeout. He's calling the referee over. He's out past the numbers. He's darn near at the line of scrimmage. So he's arguing with he's the He's saying officials. he's saying the quarterback yeah. called a timeout. I'm giving you then, a timeout. Then I'm, then I'm taking it. That's exactly right. Wow. Wow. Good heavens. Okay, well, so now the timeout is actually going to take place as the Dwinger offense now huddles up and wants to talk about things in the defense for Snyder as well. Well, clearly there is a significant uh, momentum shift here, Joe, uh, to the Snyder Panthers as the defense has stepped up. And uh, I think the play calling for Dwinger has gotten conservative. I, I agree. And um, and they're playing not to lose at this point. So let's see what happens uh, as they take this small timeout. The offense and uh, comes on in the field. The coaching staff goes back to the sidelines. And we are ready to play now. 25 to 19, Saints clinging to a six point lead. Third and 17 for the Saints. Ball resting at their own 28-yard line. Empty backfield now for Morris. And it's going to be a quick inside screen, and the ball is dropped. And uh, Armand Clark could not get his hands on that inside screen. And a fourth and 17 now for the Saints, and the punt team comes on. Well, you certainly hope for a big punt here with the wind at the Saints' back to try to at least make the, um, the Panthers start their possession on their side of the field. Right. Hippenhammer and Ridley back for the uh, for the Snyder Panthers. C.J. Booth. Max protection package for the Dwinger Saints. Here is the kick. It is a spiral kick. Driving deep, driving deep, and driving the receiver back near the 30-yard line. Looking for some room as Ridley steps out of one tackle. Gets hit and he's going to be dropped inside the 45-yard line, a 40-yard kick that time by the Saints. How much gas does the Saints defense have left, Sean? Right. I really think, at, what is that, 9.40 left on the clock? Um, there may be too much time left on the clock, Joe. The, this, remember, no offensive starters go both ways for Snyder, so these guys are coming in completely fresh, and they've been had great success rushing the ball five yards a pop. You're right. First and 10 at their own 44-yard line as Hoppert and company come on for the Panthers. Single setback, two wideouts to the left side. Here is a snap, give to the tailback around the right side, back to the line of scrimmage, and not much more that time for Christian Covington. Hoss Henry on the stop for Bishop Blair. They're gonna mark it at the 45-yard line. Not much of a gain whatsoever. Twenty-five to nineteen is your score. Snyder trailing, but with the ball moving right to left on your radio dial. Same formation this time. Here's the snap. This is going to be a quarterback keeper looking for that seam. He gets north to the fifty before he is stopped. Mike Hake on the stop. Call that a gain of six. Brings up a third and four, right at the midfield strike. The uh, Panthers have converted on their last three third down tries. It was a third and one, a third and four. A third and five, and here it is, third and four. Snyder taking their time. Hopper breaking, uh, barking out those orders. Double tights this time, wide out left and right. Hopper with the ball. Give right up the middle. Covington has the first down, stretches for more. Inside, Dwinger's 45 to the 44. Mike Hake on the stop, but not before Covington picks up six to seven yards. Only needed four. Another third down conversion for Snyder. Christian Covington, he runs a lot taller than he is. He checks in at 5'10". He sure looks a lot taller than that. He did on that play. So a fresh set of downs for Snyder. Slot right is Hippenhammer. 
play action, rolling to the right, looking to throw. Now he tucks it and runs. Hopper takes a hit, but he gets a couple good yards out of that one. Amon Clark from his cornerback position comes up and makes a stop on Hopper. He looks like he was going to have a bigger run than that. Amon Clark came up and made a nice open field tackle. Under eight minutes to play here. Snyder going against the wind, but so far keeping that ball on the ground as they haven't had to throw. Second and eight now. Hip and hammer. Slot left. Single setback. Here comes the blitz. And they hit him in the backfield. He's going to fall forward, stay on his feet, back to the line of scrimmage at the most as Covington wow. was denied through the middle. McGeary, big stop by McGeary, the sophomore linebacker, getting more playing time now with Winkle John out. Does a nice job there on the blitz. Loss of one brings up a third and nine for the Snyder Panthers. They've been rolling very strong on third down so far. Let's see. This is a longer one. Third and nine now. Same formation. Here's a snap. He's looking to throw. Got plenty of time. Steps up. Oh, the oh! collapse, and he is dropped. Nixon Yanko. Yanko comes up with a huge stop, dropped him for a loss back at their own 49-yard line. An eight-yard sack for the Saints defense. That was huge because Michael Hopper was just about to let it go. Yes. He reared back and that arm cocked back, and he was going to let it fly. And then about that time, as Stephen Nix and Frankie Yanko grabbed a hold of him and brought him down. So the punt team comes on for Snyder. Again, punting into the wind now. Amon Clark back deep along with Hake. And here is a long line drive and no chance. Snyder rolls down to the 10 yard line. I've said it once, I've said it 100 times. Your job as a punt returner is just catch the ball. Catch the ball. Get to it and catch it. Yep. And excuse me, that was not Hake, that was Effinger back deep for the Saints. Was not able to get a hold of that ball. And now the Saints are facing a 90 yard field with 6.18 remaining here in the fourth quarter. 25 to 19 is your score. Saints clinging to that six-point lead. I'd like to see a play action on first down. I, I, you know, they're they're really pinning, the Panthers are really pinning their ears back and coming after uh, Morris in these in these, this running game. Split backs, two wide outs to the left. Here is a snap. Here's the option. Here is the pitch. He's hitting the backfield and going nowhere is Effinger. Great stop by, by the Panthers. Just really, this defense is not the same defense that was here no, in the first half. Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, <laughs> this is, I, this yeah. defense got a boost of energy in the locker room at halftime because they are playing really determined here in the second half. We'll call that a loss of two, bringing up a second and 12. Ball now resting at the eight-yard line for the Saints. In the shadow of the own, their own end zone, they break huddle. Single setback as Effinger swings left and right. Morris in the shotgun. Here is a snap. Throwing on second down. Going oh, intercepted. Oh, intercepted at the 20-yard line. Looking for room. He's got room. It down. It's breaking the tackle. In the 10, the 5. Touchdown. Dances in. Touchdown. Yeah. Who is that? 22 again, Sean. Yep. He's had a big game. That's Trav. No. Yep. Let's see if they mark him down, actually. A huge interception that time by Tristan Wells. Tristan Wells, yeah, and they are marking him down at the five. So he's marked down at the five, but a huge turn of events for the Snyder Panthers. They have really showed up here in the second half, and especially at the end of the third and start of the fourth. Eddie Morris was trying to find Amon Clark out of the backfield, and uh, Gorman, did you say? Wells. Wells, yeah, Wells just Wells. cut and undercut the route and uh, did a nice job of picking off Morris. First and goal for Snyder from the five yard line. High formation, give to the tailback, bounces it outside, looking for the edge as Money Woods, touchdown. You know what that is? That's fresh legs. Yes. You saw a lot of slow Saints trying to chase him down. That's fresh legs, Money Woods. Snyder knocks it up with 5.53 to go here in the contest. An opportunity to take the lead here on Boozman as he lines up the PAT. Well, here in the second half, the Dwinger Saints offense have had the wheels come off, and Snyder has capitalized.
Awaiting the snap. The hold is good. The kick is up, and it's no good. No, no good. good. This is unbelievable to me. This young man has only missed three extra points all season, Sean, and he's missed three here tonight. This game is tied up. Wow. 25-25 to 25 is your score with 5.53 remaining in the contest. We're going to step out for a 30-second break. You're listening to SAC Football here on Redeemer Radio, 106.3 FM. Programming on Redeemer Radio is underwritten in part by Bob Busher Homes. Floor plan customization is what they specialize in. Find floor plans, building sites, and read Bob's story on the web at bobbusherhomes.com. Bob Busher Homes is locally owned with offices in Fort Wayne and Angola. For more information about new home building or remodeling, Bob Busher Homes can be reached at 260-490-3355. Back to live action here at Zollner Stadium. We've got a barn burner on our hands. All the momentum so far seems to be with the Snyder Panthers as they have all knotted things up here at 25 with 5.53 to go. Sean, the Saints had 25 at halftime. This defense has done a great job for Snyder and shut them out here in the second half. And the offense is clicking. The the uh, Saints have been outscored in the second half, 19-0. to zero. Yeah. Halftime score, 25-6, to six, and we're all knotted up at 25. Let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Mark Watts. But, Joe, you can't fault the uh, Dwanger's defense. What were the uh, – how far did they have to go? No, Mark, I didn't fault anybody. No, no, I, I, know, no, I know you didn't. I'm just saying that's what's been tough about it. This field position has been the difference. No, no, I knew you weren't. I'm just saying that's been the difference. What They had about a 25, a 35, and there was a five-yard, uh, you know, drive. So, no, yeah, I, 65, I know you were Yeah, 65 yards they've driven in the second oh, half. No. No, and no. It's, it's got 19 points. Yeah, no, I was just thinking, I was just saying field position, nothing about the Saints defense, not at all. No, no, no. Okay, you guys done? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay. Here is Boozman's kick. Again, it's a cross field kick, high end over end kick. Oh, it it's on the ground. Down, and it's a loose ball. That Snyder, Snyder has cover. it. Snyder has it. Wow. Two turnovers back to back. The wheels, I think, are officially off the bus. Wow. A tale of two halves here on display for this uh, Snyder team and this Dwenger team as uh, the White Hat officially gives the ball back to Snyder in Dwenger territory at the 27-yard line. Wow, with 549, you really thought maybe the Saints could get the ball back, maybe get down the field, maybe score, kick a field goal, something to win this, break this tie. But uh, the momentum is all in Snyder's uh, area right now. That was T.J. Titman, one of the upbacks on the kickoff team. Way uh, that tried to make the catch went off his shoulder pads right into the Snyder Panthers' hands. Hoppert and company on the field for the Snyder offense. Let's see what they can do here. Single setback, two wide outs to the left. Quarterback in the shotgun. Here's a snap. Give to the tailback through the middle is Money Woods. He breaks it out to the right side, still on his feet, breaking tackles down to the 20 yard line. We're seeing fatigue, Sean. I know yes. I talked about last drive, but oh. you saw it there. It's He's just running around, and people are just diving at his legs. He, yep. th there's not a lot left in the tank here on the defense. No, it's plainly obvious. We'll call that a gain of seven. Brings up second and three. Ball now resting right at the red zone door on the 20. Snyder looking over to the sidelines for the play. Playbook wide open with second and three here. Play comes in. Here's a snap. Blitz coming. Get it in around. Left side. He's looking for a seam. Bounces it in. Cuts. Down to the 10. Inside. Down to the 5 yard line. And again, that's Money Woods on the carry for the Snyder Panthers. Looks like Bart Tittman on the stop. And really, they look so fresh. The Panthers are just running wild. A 15 yard gainer that time for the Snyder Panthers. Sets them up with the first and goal just inside the five. Snyder taking their time. Under center this time is Hoppert with an eye formation behind him. Here's the snap, giving the tail back. He's hitting the backfield, bounces off a of one tackle. A flag comes face out. Face mask. That's going to be a face mask. He's dropped at the 10. That would have been a five-yard loss, but clearly a face mask that time against the Saints. It'll be half the distance to the goal, so it's going to be back to the five-yard line. Basically, we're going to replay that down.
And there's the official call. And they will put it back on the five yard line. So they're going to replay the down. First and goal from the five for the Snyder Panthers. Again, that I formation now. Money Woods, your tailback. Covington in to block for him. Here's a snap. He's rolling out. Play action to the right side. Looking to throw. Throws it into traffic. Goes down. Touchdown. Touchdown, Snyder. Off the carpet. On a crossing route. Thrown down low and picked clean, and it's a Snyder touchdown. Well thrown ball by Hoppert, low where only his receiver could get it. And uh, the receiver went down low and scooped it. Nice play by the Snyder Panthers. So Snyder with 419 takes the lead, hit their first of the game here in the fourth quarter. Ethan, Ethan Cox on the catch. Now, let's see what Boozman can do. He's not been good on these tonight. One for four, Joe, is that right? Yeah, it's a mystery. Again, he's kicking into the wind for the PAT. The snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is up, and this time it does look good, and it is. 32 to 25, Snyder now takes a seven point lead over the Dwinger Saints with 419 to go in the contest. Stick around folks, we're back in 30 seconds. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. Successful coaches make changes to succeed by calling timeouts to make needed adjustments. For it's clear, no change equals no change. This is David X with Union Savings Bank in Fort Wayne. I started mortgage lending in 1988. Since then, I've been trusted by thousands of area homeowners. I offer low closing costs and great rates on home lending so you can save big money both up front and over the life of your loan. Make a change for the better when purchasing a different home or refinancing to lower your payment. Call timeout, get your mortgage statement in hand. Call me anytime for your free mortgage checkup. Make sure you compare. Call David X, 418-6191. Member FDIC, Plaza Lender. We are back to live action here at Zollner Stadium with Joe Warden and Mark Watts. I'm Sean McBride, joined in the booth with Brad Bodette, and on the sidelines is Nick Gray. And we have seen a tale of two tapes here. Oh, uh, boy, oh, boy, what a game it's been. 32-25, to 25, Snyder has taken the lead now with only four minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the contest. Snyder has outscored doing a 26-0 here in the second half. Boozman now from the 40-yard line, kicking into the wind. Again, he does this uh, cross-field kick. It's a high end-over-end kick. And they're going to drive it back deep this time near the 12-yard line, taken by the deep back. Through the, through the middle, still on his feet near midfield, taken down from behind near the 40-yard line. Mike Hake. Mike Hake, number 32, on a great return that time, setting up the offense in good shape for the Saints. Well, again, in the second half, the offense has struggled for Bishop Dwinger, to say the least. Fatigue has set in, and now they faced a first and 10 out of the 43-yard line. Eddie Morris from the shotgun. He's got the snap. Quarterback keeper through the middle. Looks for a seam. Gets north of the first down marker. Gains one, maybe two. No longer are we seeing the push up front, right. uh, Sean. This defense has really gotten stingy here in the second half. It is a gain of two. Brings up a second and eight for the Saints as the clock continues to grind down. Under four minutes to go now. Again, your score is Snyder, 32, Dwinger, 25. Twins to the right side. In the slot is Amon Clark. High formation, quarterback under center. Get to the tailback, looking for some room. Trying to Jordan bounce Hudson, it. And he's got nothing. Again, Hudson trying to bounce it out instead of, five, you know, getting up in the hole. Um, let's talk about the Saints offense a little bit tonight. Uh, missing tonight are uh, Tommy Steele. The, he got injured. He's out. He's the leading receiver for the Saints team. And also Nick Houck not dressed tonight. He's the second leading receiver on this team. Uh, that elevates Bradley Black to the one receiver left in this game that had more than 10 receptions on the season. Loss of two on the play brings up third and 10 for the Saints. Ball resting at the 42-yard line. Split backs now for the Saints. Two wide outs to the right. Here's a snap. Get to the tail. Try the trap through the middle. Not much there for Amon Clark. 
as he gets out to the 44. The Saints have not converted a third down conversion in the second half. They've missed on all four tries. Now a fourth and eight for the Saints. You have to go. Yeah, the offense remains on the field with two minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the contest. And it looks like Dwinger is going to burn a timeout. So the teams come over to the sidelines and the Snyder faithful on their feet giving a well-deserved round of applause to the Panthers. We'll go ahead and keep things right here. And while we have a minute, we're going to check in with our associate executive assistant producer, Nick Gray, hopefully with some scores and updates from around the area. I'm here. Sorry about that. Um, I just heard from uh, our friend Steve Gilley over at Bishop Bluers, and they are now leading Southside 37 to 0. It looks like the Concordia Carroll game might be a final 33 to, to 3. Concordia winning that matchup. Wow. Homestead's beating Wayne 35 to 7. Northrop up on uh, Northside still 21 14. The Calves on uh, beating Belmont 20 to 6. New Haven beat East Noble 41 to 21. That's a final. And the last final I have right now is Woodland beat uh, South Adams 36 to 3. Back up to you guys. Fourth and eight for the Saints. The Snyder faithful are on their feet making noise. Junior quarterback Eddie Morris in the shotgun with trips to the right. Here is a snap. He's looking to throw. Has some time. Decides to tuck it and run. Cannot get out of the pocket. Flag comes out and he is dropped for a sack. Looked like Lawrence Johnson, number 90, was there, the big defensive tackle, holding against the Saints. That'll be declined. That's going to be Snyder's ball, and this one is all but over, guys. That's exactly right. They will decline the penalty. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. Actually, a loss of two. Back to the original line of scrimmage. And Snyder will take over in Dwinger territory with 2.24 remaining in the contest. Snyder up 32-25. to 25. Well, no more gas left in the tank for, no. the, uh, for the Dwinger Saints tonight, Joe. You had called it something we wanted to watch from the beginning. They had seven players going two ways. Uh, again, adversity, their banner this year as Winklejohn taken out from the uh, middle linebacker position. And fatigue has set in. And Snyder Panthers have had their way with the Saints in the second half. Gutsy performance by the Saints. I mean, there's a lot of guys leaving it all on the field tonight, but just not enough left in the tank here in the fourth quarter. Quarterback under center. Hopper gives to the tailback. Money Woods looking for some room. Gets it. Gets into the linebacker core. Drags the tackler with him down to the 35-yard line. Mike Hake on the stop. So, again, no reason for the Snyder Panthers to put the ball in the air. The running game has been very effective here in the second half. And a gain of eight that time on first down. Under two minutes to go now. And it's all but elementary as the Snyder, uh, Saints faithful start to make their way out to the parking lot. Second and two now for Snyder. I formation. Hoppert under center, gives to the tailback, Woods right through the middle, gets into the linebacker core, breaks it to the right side. He will have enough for the first down inside the 30, down to the 28. Hoss Henry hobbles off. He's given it all, his all tonight. That he has. And then some. So again, uh, with things ending the way we think they will they start the clock again one minute and 20 seconds snyder will escape unscathed against this scrappy gutsy bishop dwinger team and here's a handoff to woods again through the middle get some positive yards trying to strip the ball frankie yanko it's yanko unsuccessfully and now we've got a timeout on the field for dwinger i think saints will burn their last time out sean with 103 to go 32 to 25 is your score. Well, again, we're going to stick with the Snyder Panthers as next week they will take on the Bishop Lewis Knights in the season ender. The grand finale. The grand finale. The regular season will be over next week. And really right now, Joe, it is the SAC on the line and Snyder with really a they clear, locked it up clear here path. Tonight. Yeah, they this, locked it up here tonight because it. the next uh, best team has two losses, right? so uh, the Snyder Panthers will win the city championship, the SAC title, and regain the victory bell. They will, they will move to 8-0. and 
on the season. The Saints will fall to four and three. The Saints will be playing here again at Zollner next week and taking on a one and six Northrop team. So you can catch Tailgate Talk at 6 p.m. next Friday night, right before our Game of the Week coverage. Again, featuring the Bishop Lures Knights visiting Spooler Stadium to take on the Snyder Panthers. A minute to go in this contest, and here is Snyder again on a second and seven. Try to give right through the middle. Not Money much at that time for Money Woods, and it's going to bring up a third and six with under a minute to go. One more play, one more snap, and this one will be in the books. And the Snyder Panthers are going to get it done, 32-25. What a great second half played by the Snyder Panthers team. Hats off to the men in black as they get it done. Victory formation now for the Snyder Panthers as they will uh, take this last 12 seconds off the play clock and take a knee as they get the uh, game clock under 25. And that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Snyder wins a tough-fought battle against the hard-fought Bishop Warner Saints. 32-25 to is your final score here from Zollner Stadium. We're going to go ahead and step out for a 30-second break, see if we can get Coach Tippin's comments live with Mark Watts after this signature victory for the Snyder Panthers. Stick around, folks. Our post-game action coming right up after this 30-second break. You're listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. Spherion Staffing, locally owned by the Pentenberg family, excels in finding the best candidates for industrial, clerical, customer service, non-clinical health care, IT, and professional direct hire placements. Spherion clients are accustomed to getting the right employees at the right time, every time. Spherion Staffing supports the proud excellence of the Dwinger Saints and the Lures Knights, both on the field and in the classroom. Whether you are seeking your next career move or searching for great employees, call us at 260-496-9900 or visit us on the web at spherion.com slash ftwayne. Back to live action here where the Snyder Panthers really, really have come up large here in the second half and knocked off the Bishop Dwinger Saints. The Saints uh, had a 25-6 lead at half, and the Snyder Panthers have come back with a signature second half to beat the Saints. 32-25 is your final score. We're going to wait and get word from Mark Watts and see if he can go ahead and get a comment uh, from Coach Tippman, who just pulled off a uh, really a beautiful victory here in the second half, Joe Worker. Wow, it was it was an amazing feat. It was really two different teams. We really did say that. Uh, the defense was bad. The Panther defense was bad in the first half. They were not ready to play, but whatever was said in the locker room got them ready to play in the second half, and they shut the Saints out in the second half, and they needed it, and they needed to do that. Only winning by seven here. They needed the turnovers. They needed the bad punts from the Saints. The Saints... Uh, um, really did not have a good second half, I guess, yeah, to say it, yeah. to, to put it in good terms. That's exactly right. Okay, Mark, we got your Congratulations, SAC Thank you. champs. Uh, it was certainly a hard-fought one. I, we didn't plan it that way, but we'll take it. All right, now, this is Redeemer Radio, so why would you say at halftime? Um, <laughs> well, we, we knew, number one, that we weren't playing the way we were capable of. Number two, they were out playing us. You know, plain and simple. I, you know. It's a hard lesson to learn, but they were kicking our tail in every facet of the game, just playing harder. You guys and uh, state champs. He showed you why you well, state champs tonight. I'll tell you. Well, we're proud of our kids, and hopefully, it's a lesson learned. But great compliment to Bishop Wenger. You know, down a few guys and come out fighting like dogs. That's why this game is so great. You know, because both teams are going to play hard nose, clean football, and uh, it could go either way. And this is one of those years. Congratulations, SAC champs. Thank you. All right, back to you guys. All right, Mark Watts, thanks very much for that. Stick around, folks. We've got a one-minute break coming up right here. After that, we're going to do final stats with Brad Bodette and call it a night. Stick around, folks. You are listening to SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. Hello, I'm Tom Steele with Tom Steele Tire and Auto Repair a family-owned business for over 35 years. We carry all major brands of new tires, as well as a large selection of quality used tires to save you money. We do all types of auto repairs, be it brakes, alignment, or just fix your air conditioning. Tom Steel Tire, North Clinton or Illinois Road. Give us a try, you'll be glad you did. 
Hi, sports fans. Sean McBride here, inviting you to try the barbershop experience. The St. Joe Center Barbershop, located at the corner of St. Joe Center and Maple Crest, prides itself on professionalism, cleanliness, and a family-friendly atmosphere. In their third generation of family ownership, they have a combined experience of over 125 years. Give them a call at 485-6981. It's my barbershop of choice. That's St. Joe Center Barbershop at 485-6981. Back to uh, the postgame show here on Redeemer Radio, folks, brought to you by Bishop Lewers High School, a Catholic educational community that instills in each student dignity, integrity, respect, and responsibility. You can catch the Lewers spirit at www.bishoplewers.org. 32-25 to 25 is your final here tonight. The Snyder Panthers taking the SAC championship away from the Bishop Dwinger Saints with a great second half effort here, 32 to 25 is your score, overcoming a 25 to six deficit at halftime. Let's check in with Brad Bodette, who's got the full game stats. Brad, what do you have for us? Hey, thanks, Sean. Uh, I'm gonna show you my literary prowess and tell you it was the best of times, it was the worst of times for <laughs> Dwenger tonight. Yes. Uh, after the first half, team totals for Dwenger, they had 254 yards total offense. The second half, they had 36 total yards of offense in the second half. Uh, Snyder ended up with 270 yards of total offense. On the Dwenger side, Mr. Morris was 13 of 16. Oh, I'm sorry. He was 4 of 12 for 52 yards. Effinger had the 65-yard pass, so he out threw Morris tonight. Uh, in the rushing department, uh, Effinger, 13 carries for 101 yards. Hudson, 8 carries for 41 yards. And in the receiving department, Mr. Black had 2 catches for 97 yards. For the winning Snyder Panthers, Mr. Hippenhammer, or I'm sorry, Mr. Hopewright was four of seven for 45 yards. Uh, his big uh, running back, Money Woods, 27 carries for 132 yards tonight, and not much in the passing department. Then they had 40 yards total. So, um, big first half for Dwanger and a big first second half for Snyder's. What yep. the whole tale of the game is tonight. Yep, you're absolutely right, Brad. Thank you very much for that update, Brad Bodet. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Remember, next week, Tailgate Talk at 6 o'clock, followed by our Game of the Week, the Snyder Panthers hosting the Bishop Lewers Knights. That's going to do it for our coverage tonight. Very special thanks to our Chief Sports Engineer, Robert Scora, back at the uh, station keeping us on the air. Our sideline crew tonight consisted of one Mark Watts, our sideline reporter, Nick Gray with our halftime interview and scores and updates from around the area. Videography uh, tonight provided by Eric Pete and John McBride up here in the booth. Brad Bodette, our statistician. My broadcast partner tonight was Joe Wharton, and I'm Sean McBride wishing you all a good night. May God bless you, and we'll see you on the sidelines. This is SAC Football on Redeemer Radio 106.3 FM. Watercutter Financial has the plays to help you score a great retirement. David Watercutter is a financial professional at FSC Securities Corporation, a broker-dealer with over 1,450 registered representatives nationwide. David's 20-plus years of experience have been helping individuals reach their financial goals. Watercutter Financial is located at 9602 Coldwater Road. To schedule an appointment to review your financial and retirement plans, call David at 260-490-1804. Member FINRA and SIPC. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the opportunity to have been together today. As we depart now, we ask you to send your angels to watch over us, to lead us in safety, to return to our homes, to our families, to our duties and obligations, until we come back once again to be reunited with you, who are Lord forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for listening to Redeemer Radio Sports. We now return you to regular programming.